Aggies will receive the opening kick. David Albert will kick off for UIW from San Antonio, Texas, the Southland Conference champs a season ago. Great start this year. They were receiving top 25 votes, then enter the top 25 before losing three in a row to bring the record to five and five on the year. Watch out for Jason Huntley on kick returns. He does not have a return touchdown this year. Number one right there in Crimson, but he has five for his career, which is too shy of the FBS record. And it is a pooch, which is expected given how good Jason Huntley is. Flag is down, Gibson, Christian Gibson across midfield. There's three flags down on the return by the Aggie running back on special teams. Yeah, that's a good return by Gibson right there. He would, looks like he was ready for that. We kind of thought that there would be a short kick and, and Christian was there to pick it up and, and rumble for as many yards as he can. But three, three flags in there, usually in the area of a block in the back or something, which is tough because you, the kick just happened. So there's hardly anyone downfield that you can block in the back. But that's a good return by Christian. The referee today is Scott Campbell. There are two fouls, both by the return team. Personal foul, illegal blindside block. Return team, that penalty will be declined. Holding, number 12, return team. That penalty will be enforced 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Penalty is on wide receiver Kayla Mills in the return game. So the Aggies would have had really good field position. Now they will start at the 24 for Josh Atkins and company. Atkins, a redshirt sophomore from Spring Branch, which is in the San Antonio area. And he completes his first pass to his best target this year, Baylor grad transfer Tony Nicholson, who has six plus catches in seven of the nine games this year. You know, jo Josh is also coming off a, a great game where he didn't throw any picks last week, so confidence should be high for Josh. Atkins picks up three on the pass and catch. The Aggies run it here with Jason Huntley, and there's a tackle for loss for star defensive end Chance Main, young man from Cherry Vale, Kansas. Season high, 14 tackles for loss last week for UIW. It looks like we just didn't block him. There was someone who was supposed to chip him on that side, and if you can't get anyone on him, he will make you pay. So that's a nice tackle right there by Chance. The Aggies lose three, so it brings up third down and 10 yards to go. They're going to call it a long nine here. Pass goes near side to Isaiah Lottie. Lottie looking for first down yardage, and they're going to spot him. A couple yards shy. Tackle made by Sean Holton, freshman from Fort Worth. Yeah, th these, these quick passes to the outside are something we live on, and those are quick ones, and the object is to get him in open space and let Lottie make, some, make something big happen. But he just had a long way to go, and he just couldn't get to that first down marker. So it's a three and out to start. Peyton Deisler comes in to punt. Heisler, seven punts in two of the previous three weeks. Gunnar Henderson calling for a fair catch for UIW. He's filling in today for Jalen Jimerson in the punt return game. Well, a couple of air raid offenses going at it. This is true air raid for UIW. The Aggies are a variation, Doug Martin says, of the air raid, but this UIW passing game has been potent, and they're throwing the ball 50 to 60 times a game the last couple of weeks. And John Copeland is a good one. Sophomore from Argyle, Texas, who is only 163 passing yards away from the school record for a single year, which he set a year ago. He'll pull it and fire far side of the field, intended for Jalen Campbell. And the pass is incomplete for John Copeland. Yeah, great coverage out there, you know, and this air raid offense, this is this quick, pass, dunk and dink if you will, but get it to the receiver, make him, uh, let him get a play, let him make something happen there. Shabbat Lomax was off coverage, but he came in in a hurry to cover down on that. Cardinals will use three running backs. This is Kevin Brown, 
who leads the Cardinals in both carries and rushing yards this year. And the Aggies able to sniff it out. And it's going to bring up third down for the Cardinals of UIW. Yeah, that's a great series for the, for the Ags. You know, you got to stick your heels in there, and so you got to make sure that you uh, insert yourself to say, look, here's the tempo that we're going to play. So it's a good third down right here for us. Third down and seven. The Aggies show blitz as Rashi Hodge is there on the line next to Roy Lopez, who's back this week. Roy can still play in two games in redshirt and be back next year. Now Hodge will drop back in coverage. Copeland fires across the middle, complete, and then dropped by his intended wide receiver, Camden Perry, freshman from Longview, Texas, and the Cardinals will have to punt on their first offensive possession. Yeah, great pressure. We were trying to bring him, but they picked up everyone, and so Perry hit the It looked like he had it. I couldn't tell there, but uh, Perry can catch the ball. You know, he had 11 receptions last week for 105 yards, so that's great is that uh, matting coverage there. David Balcom is the punter for UIW. Sends this one away to O.J. Clark, who's been the punt returner all year for the Aggies. Flag is down as Clark gets across the 25 all the way up to the 27-yard line. And there's a few penalty markers down on this play. You know, early penalties will really hurt your momentum as you're trying to get things going and you end up just, and they're special team stuff. So these things should be cleaned up. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number four, return team, half the distance to the goal, first down, timeout. So another special teams penalty really hurts the Aggies and they're gonna be pinned deep near their own end zone. Josh Atkins and the Aggie offense back to work for their second possession when you come back. Aggies and Cardinals here today in their first ever meeting. We're at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Adam Young alongside Danny Nee. And today's game is brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. Aggies back on offense for their second offensive possession and uh, impact players here today. For the Aggies, Danny, a couple of wide receivers. Yeah, a couple of wide receivers that are leading for the Aggies. Tony Nicholson is leading the rece receivers with six receptions last week. You have O.J. Clark, who had four receptions last week, who moved third in the all-time catches behind A.J. Harris and Chris Williams from the Aggies. Cardinals, Cooks, leading tackler of 68 tackles, a late scratch on Jimerson, as you talked about earlier. That's going to hurt them. Let's see how that affects their defense. Running back alongside Josh Atkins is Christian Gibson, who had a big game two games ago at Georgia Southern. And Gibson rumbles across the 20 up to the 21. He picks up seven on his first down carry. I like that uh, run on the first down where you can establish that run. And of course, one of the keys, but I think you have to do that in order to really start opening up those passing lanes. But you got to show them you can run the ball. And Christian's a good guy that can run the ball. In motion is Andre Bodison, who has not been used much this year. Atkins rolls right, and he tosses downfield. O.J. Clark with the reception. The third most catches in program history. Quite the career, Danny. It is quite the career, and there's, uh, he's with a great company there with uh, A.J. Harris and Chris Williams for sure, but nice little out route there by Clark and picking up those extra yardage. Man, Josh looks very comfortable in that backfield back there, throwing the ball. Big pickup on... Second down for Clark. They swing it out to Jason Huntley. Good block on the outside for the wide receiver, Isaiah Lottie, who's able to give Jason Huntley a few more yards. And when you look at the numbers for Jason Huntley right now, Danny, he is having a career year, even better than his previous couple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, the, these uh, quick passes, like we've talked about earlier, is this is what we live on, but a lot of it is the blocking up front. And you've noted the blocking up front there, but that's where you pick up those extra yards after catch. Atkins will pull it and run. He slides, and it's where he starts the slide is where they mark him down, which is the 45-yard line. Atkins running the ball a lot more this year, and this is a decision for him, isn't it, Danny, whether he's going to tuck it in the belly of Huntley or run it himself? Yeah, you know, uh, it, I'd, I'd like to see him run and take more yardage, but I also understand that you want to protect yourself, get a long game, got maybe a little banged up a little last week, and so maybe better to just slide and take the yardage. 
The Aggies need the 48 of UIW. Atkins has some time underneath to Kayla Mills. He's reaching for the first down marker. It will depend on the spot. The Aggies more than likely will go for it anyway if he is short. Caleb Mills, we haven't called his name much, but you know, we comment on him in the, when they were warming up, and he is a beast when you're out there warming up uh, before the game started, and we're wondering, why can't you get him in the game more? There he is right there, getting in the game. Fourth and a short one. The Aggies, nine for 17 on fourth down this year. They go to Gibson, and he gets the first down and some more. Flag comes in late. As Gibson able to crawl his way well past the first down marker. Good start for the senior out of Dallas. Fifteen yards out at the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that uh, Christian Gibson is getting the ball, getting some carries there. He's a hard worker, you know. Uh, I did did uh, have a chance to talk with the running backs coach, and so we'll, we'll talk about that during the game. But he couldn't say enough nice things about both Huntley and Gibson on and off the field. So I'm really excited that they're they're starting out to have a great game so far. That's a 15-yard face mask penalty on Kalechi and a Lebechi. Defensive end for the Cardinals. Atkins straight up the gut. Protects himself with the slide. A good first down run for the Aggie quarterback from Spring Branch, which is right outside of San Antonio where UIW is. Yeah, that's a, that's a great play right there by Josh, taking that ball. He rides that thing so long in there that it just, everyone pulled to it, backers and everyone, and he pulled it and had a great lane. Second down for the Aggies. Atkins fires near side, incomplete. Nearly a one-handed snag for Robert Downs the third. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a pass that he misses. He misses away, which is what he has to do. It's a deep one. I like taking a shot, and I like being able to do that. It's a great pass because if you miss, you're going to miss it wide. You do have to be careful with these with these uh, cornerbacks, these defensive backs from the Cardinals. They, they have 17 interceptions. Yeah, UIW has forced the most turnovers in the entire country, both FBS and FCS. Jason Huntley gets away from Chance Main. And Huntley has the first down as he's able to break a tackle. He's really, really tough to take down from behind. He is. And even where Chase, Chase didn't uh, have a chance to uh, get blocked, and so he thought he had the tackle. But this is what speed does to you as well. And so he gets around the edge there. And he's a seasoned running back for sure, as we talked about in the open. Great numbers, as you can see there on the screen. Great first down. Career high, 620 rushing yards coming in. It was a botched snap and then a whistle. The ball was not ready for play as we're still in substitution mechanics. It's going to be first and 10. Start on my signal, the clock. All right, so they're going to re-snap it here. By the way, this is the healthiest the offensive line has been all year for the Aggies. Sage Dockstatter is back this week at left tackle. Playing in just his second game this year, his first full game. Didn't have very many snaps against Georgia Southern a couple of games ago. First down and 10, Jason Huntley looking for some space. And maneuvers his way down to the 15-yard line. He picks up three on the carry. Aggies really only using two running backs this year, Jason Huntley and Christian Gibson. Getting all the carries. The toss goes to Huntley in some space. Huntley to the outside. Jason Huntley reaching for the pylon. And they're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the four, it looks like. Nice play call here. Little little toss after, off the uh, play action so you'll see a little quick this is after the play action little toss he gets the corner this just shows you the raw speed of Huntley so Huntley he impresses a lot of opposing teams no doubt about it on his raw speed don't let him get the corner as you'll see right here because then he can turn that thing up there and he's just one shoestring away from scoring initially the line judge had him down at the four now the officials are converging and talking about the spot he might be all the way down to the two. We'll see. You know, again, the, the play is, the big play is getting a block to the outside. So after you have a play action and it sucks in the linebackers, he has a little quick pitch to Huntley, 
and you have to be blocking on the outside. And there was a great block that set that thing up. Control the ball. It went out of bounds forward, in essence, of the end of the run. We're going to bring the ball back to where it went out of bounds. It's going to be first and goal for New Mexico State. All right, so they're going to mark him, Danny, down at the two. First and goal after the first down run for Jason Huntley. That's a good break right there for the Ags. And I don't think Eric Morris, the head coach of UIW, likes the spot. He was well out on the field. Yeah, they're going to check this. They're going to review this to see where the spot should be on the run by Jason Huntley as he was tiptoeing around the sideline. Eric Morris, the head coach of UIW, now in year two. And when he took over, it was a one-win program. Last season, they won the Southland. He had won a program record six games. And you know, I had, a, as we're looking at that replay of, of uh, Huntley right here to try to get the spot, I had a chance to talk to Coach Morris, and I, I really enjoyed speaking to him. He was, a, he was a motivator. So even though we didn't get to spend a lot of time together, I could see where players would want to play for him. And we talked about the, the things that he could learn or things that he brought from Texas Tech. And I asked him specifically about, you know, when you come from Texas Tech and you go to um, Incarnate Word, is there, is there similar things or what can you bring from one program to the other? And it was interesting, Adam, because he said, you know, when you get there, players are players and they get motivated the same way at any level. And that's what you, you know, need to do to get the program going. And I like that in a head coach. I like saying, you know what, I'm going to be the motivator. I'm going to give them something to work for. And the players are players at any level. And, and I can appreciate that. So it was a great chat. And I know he's got great things in store mm -hmm. for uh, Incarnate Word. So good luck to uh, Coach from here on out. He's learned under some really good coaches. Kevin Sumlin, he learned under to start his career. Mike Leach, he played for. Cliff Kingsbury, he coached with. When Eric Morris was a wide receiver at Texas Tech, he played alongside Michael Crabtree and Danny Amendola. The ball Amendola. carrier fumbled the ball at the two-yard line. It went out of bounds in the end zone. By rule, that is a touchback. It's going to be first down, incarnate word. Wow. Talk about a change. So it's going to be incarnate word football, and we'll sort this out when we come back. Scoreless Incarnate Word Football when we come back. Welcome back to Aggie Memorial Stadium. Crazy change of events here early on in the first quarter. Jason Huntley was running in towards the pylon looking for a touchdown. He was reaching towards the pylon. He was out at the two, but before he was out, he lost the football because he was reaching towards the pylon. And because of that, it's a touchback because the ball went in the end zone, Danny, before he was out of bounds, correct? Yeah, great explanation, Adam. I, that's exactly what the uh, official saw. And so the ball was coming out as he was reaching to cross that, the goal line, and it just rolled through the end zone, and it's a touchback. So here we are on defense. What a change in events. And it's awfully common for a running back or really any player to reach for the pylon, and that's where it comes back to backfire for the Yagis. Huntley almost had his 27th career touchdown. Instead, it's UIW football on the touchback. We've seen a lot this year. That is a new one. Yeah, that's a, that's a new one for sure. And so you can't really harp on Huntley trying to make something big happen to get on the board there, but you do have to take care of the football. John Copeland, the quarterback, a sophomore from Argyle, Texas, the Southland Conference freshman of the year one year ago. In motion was C.J. Hardy, deep shot downfield, double coverage, almost hauled in. Pass is incomplete. Great coverage out there by the Yankees. Jared Phipps was in on it. Yeah, they're sitting back there. They're, they're waiting on it, but he still almost got behind him, didn't he? But the great coverage all over him. Nothing there. Perkins playing a little banged up, as you said, but he's, he's there to make a play along with uh, uh, Smug defense backs. Pass was intended for seldom used redshirt freshman wide receiver Brandon McDuffie. Third down and seven, pass is dropped. C.J. Hardy had to go through his hands, a freshman from Cypress, Texas. 
You know, he had uh, Copeland had lots of time back there to sit in the pocket, and so he waited for this to, this uh, receiver to break open, covered early on, but that would have given the first down, but he just could not hang on to it. We mentioned earlier the Cardinals really beat up right now at wide receiver. They're without their star, Cam Williams, and another star, Lamont Johnson, due to injuries. David Bow come back to punt. And Christian Gibson almost got his hand on it. O.J. Clark with a return past the 40. Thought he wasn't down, but he was down at the 42. So the Aggies will have very good field position after a return of six yards for O.J. Clark. Scoreless here at Aggie Memorial. Eight minutes in, the Aggies with a fumble in the end zone. That was their 23rd turnover this year in 10 games, and the Cardinals forced a turnover for the 23rd straight game. They now have 31 forced turnovers this year, which leads the country. We just saw John Copeland and the Cardinals offense. Uh, these are their impact players, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. From an Aggie defensive span, uh, standpoint, Rashi Hodge, what a hard-hitting linebacker. Forced fumble last week. Devin Richardson, 12 tackles last week. From the offense, Kevin Brown and Brady Rogers are the two guys that are going to be big key players for the Cardinals this week. Quality field position for the Aggies as the sun shines bright on a mid-60s Saturday afternoon here in the first home game in over a month for the Aggies. Empty backfield, they swing it out for O.J. Clark. Space into Cardinals territory, past midfield, gain of 11, and that will move the chains. So again, where you just see that, you know, you're gonna get the ball out there, gonna pick up some blocking on the point there. You see two great blocks and OJ just takes it upfield. Here's Jason Huntley who just fumbled moments ago. Just a wacky play. Huntley was lunging and trying to reach for the pylon. He lost the football and I don't think he lost it because it came out of his hands. He was just reaching for the pylon and it turned into a turnover. Yeah, it looked like he was just trying to reach it out there to, to cross the uh, goal line plane. Christian Gibson to the right of the quarterback, Josh Atkins. Gibson dragging a tackler for an extra yard or two. The tackle was made by freshman Darius Richmond at defensive tackle for UIW. You know, G Gibson is a strong running back. I don't think we talk much about his size, but you know, at 6'1", 210, he can carry a tackler or two as you see right there. Third down and seven. The Aggies seven of 30 on a third down in the previous two weeks. Atkins throws to the sideline for Robert Downs the third near the marker. Tackle was made by Malik Phillips. And it looks like he will be just short. And the Aggies will have their second fourth down of the ball game. They converted earlier. You know, on that last play, I thought they had Gibson, so they're pulling Josh out. Got a new, uh, someone coming in. Matt Romero comes in at quarterback in this fourth and short situation. First time he has been used since the Alabama game in week two. Direct snap to Romero, and he makes an impact on fourth down. Had a boy, Matt. I think that the plan is, you know, Josh may be a little banged up. Not sure that Matt, certainly a, uh, a rough and tumble type guy at 6'2", 214 pounds. He can go stick his nose in there and get that first down, and he certainly certainly did that. Good to see Matt in the game there. Romero all the way down to the 34 as his head coach, Doug Martin, looks on. 0-0 zero, zero, under five left here in the first quarter. Atkins firing downfield, wide open is Tony Nicholson. He dives towards the pylon, and he's in for a touchdown. I'm sure they're going to make sure they're going to look at it. That, uh, they didn't fumble the ball again, but it looked good from our perspective here. They're sitting back in zone, and Josh has lots of time to throw the ball. And we know if you give Josh lots of time, he can throw darts, and he did right there. Great strike, great touchdown. Tony Nicholson with his fourth receiving touchdown this year, which leads the Aggies. He's been a huge impact in his only season here in the program after transferring in from Baylor. 
Point after from Dylan Brown out of the hold of Luke Wilson, one of the backup quarterbacks. And the kick is good. 7-0 Aggies. Josh Atkins, his 10th touchdown pass this year. Lots of time as he sits back there waiting for Tony to come in the opening. He drops it right in there, and then after that, it's all Tony all the way to the end zone. Perfect pass. Well, shoulda, coulda, woulda. It should be 14-0, but the Aggies will take it. A good drive and a bounce-back drive there for Atkins. And the Aggies have shown the ability so far, Danny, to move the ball well. 136 total yards for the Aggies, only six yards for UIW. Yeah, UIW, they're, they're still in this thing, right? It, it feels like the, the score should be 14 or something bigger than that, but uh, they're still in this thing, and it's only a, a seven-point game. Uh, but that's a good confidence builder for the Aggies because you come back in a very short order. You end up running the ball, setting up the pass. Josh has lots of time. Great blocking, throws it in there. Great confidence builder for Tony Nichols and the offense to take it in for a TD. Six plays, 58 yards, covering two minutes and 27 seconds. A 34-yard touchdown pass, Atkins to Nicholson. And this one will not be returnable for UIW. What have you seen so, so far, Danny, from the Aggie defense that's been so impressive? Well, I think the Aggie defense, they're all flying to the ball, so we're getting a little healthier. You get Ray Lopez in up front, and so that in itself doesn't make, uh, doesn't make their defense come together, but what it does do up front is that you have to start doubling him. If you don't, Ray Lopez will wreck you up front, so that pulls people in, which frees up the linebacker. Our linebacker play has been stellar. I am so impressed with our linebackers, and that's what I'm really thinking that's going to be a, a, a building block for us as we go forward, Adam. And right now in the secondary, it is Chance Cook, Shamad Lomax, Rodney McGraw, and Ray Buford Jr. No Jason Simmons right now. Copeland, not a great pass. Fumbled by Amir King, the running back, and then he jumps on it as Richardson and Lomax were hustling over from behind. Wasn't Look, a great throw by Copeland. It, 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 well, it really wasn't, but it should have been caught. Well, it was caught, actually. It looks like a, that's a fumble for sure. But I want you to recognize how the defensive pursuit to the ball, and that's what I really like to see as you see six or seven guys to the ball in a hurry. Copeland, a slant route incomplete. Through the hands of his intended receiver, Matt Young in coverage. Pass was intended for Camden Perry, who's been the target a few times so far for Copeland. You know, every time I see Matt Young play, I just can't help to think that, oh, look, there's Fred Young. Because, of course, I played with Fred Young, and Matt is just becoming a great player, just like Fred was. But he's all over that thing, and I keep waiting for him to grab one of those and pick it off. He's done a great job since he's come on the scene at Fresno, I think, is what we talked about. UIW 0 for 2 on a third down. Deep pass incomplete again. Another drop. That was right in the breadbasket of Perry. Yeah. Copeland's going after Perry a ton, and he's having some issues hauling in the football right now. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. That's a catchable football, and I think uh, Javon Ferguson kind of patted his chest saying, you know, that's my guy. I should have had that thing because that is a first down. That's a deep ball that should have been caught, and if that was Javon on the coverage there, uh, maybe you should have him a little bit tighter. Nonetheless, here they are punting, getting the ball back to the offense. And that will really frustrate head coach Eric Morris because he was a wide receiver collegiately himself, and he's seen a lot of drops so far from his wideouts. David Balcom gets it off. O.J. Clark is back deep. Short punt. Clark fields it. Probably a good idea. It was a gamble, but that was going to bounce well inside the 25, maybe inside the 20, so Clark able to... Help the Aggies out right there in the punt return game. You know, the confidence that you have to have when you're back there when guys are running at you, and you see that ball bouncing that's going to carry another 10 or 15 yards, that you can stop it right there. And he just is able to, you know, have the confidence to pick it up and say, we'll take the ball right here. And now Atkins and the Aggies trying to build on their 7-0 lead with under four left here in the opening quarter. Aggies with 84 yards through the air, 52 on the ground. Atkins is 7 of 8. He completed 76% of his passes at Ole Miss last week. 
Motion man is Isaiah Lottie. The pitch goes to Jason Huntley, bounces off a tackle, stays on his feet, and he's dragged down near midfield by Malik Phillips. There is a marker down near the 36-yard line. Nice run here, quick toss out to the outside. Everyone picks up a man, and you just give him a lane to run in, and he just turns it on. But there is a flag on the play. Number 42, defense, 10 yards, will be at it at the end of the run. First down. He was holding on UIW. So the Aggies will cruise into Cardinals territory. Some penalties so far for the Cardinals. They've committed two. They've been pretty much penalty prone the last couple of weeks. Eight plus penalties and four straight for UIW. Atkins was looking left. Now he looks right and he fires. It is caught. And then fumbled. Ball is still loose. Kayla Mills with the fumble. And it looks like it's recovered by UIW. Dalvin Fillmore, sophomore from Temple, Texas, comes up with the football. It was jarred loose out of the hands of Mills. Robert Downs, the third, almost pounced on it. And UIW has recovered. Pass, the fumble, recovered by Incarnate Word. First down. Well, that's unfortunate right there because you did you did uh, take the time. You got great blocking up front. You get rid of the ball, the you find it, you is under dump it off. Review. And it's just popped out as someone's screaming by. And well, the Cardinals recovered two fumbles in each of the previous two weeks. They have forced two turnovers now. And the Aggies have committed two fumbles. First Huntley and now Mills. I think they're going to take, take, a look at, take another look at that play. I mean, there was a lot going on right there. So you have players that are running out of bounds, that are coming back in, that are touching the ball. So you got to make sure you don't have the first. Those guys can't be the first ones to touch it. There's a catch. Good catch. Is he out of bounds when He's, he jars it loose? He is out of bounds. And maybe that's what they're looking at. Yeah. I thought maybe Mills was out of bounds too, but Caleb was in bounds when the fumble happened. But it sure seems like it's pretty obvious that yeah. the player for UIW, He's out of bounds. Malik Phillips, who forced the fumble, was out of bounds when he forced it. So this should be Aggie ball. And they sure do have a knack, though, for forcing turnovers. They have forced 32 if this one stands, but it doesn't appear that way. They lead the country, both FBS and FCS, in forced turnovers. Isn't that incredible? They're that, averaging three a game. You, you know, when I was uh, watching film and I was looking at the notes and looking at other things, it's like, that is just too incredible. But certainly, that happens a lot. And they are, they've had a lot of turnovers, a lot of interceptions. And they've also had four defensive touchdowns this year, which is second best in the country. And here today, you have a team in the Aggies offensively that has committed a ton of turnovers, one of the highest in the country, and you have a team that is forcing the highest in the country. So, you know, uh, Caleb Mills has the ball. He, do, you feel like, do you feel like he should have seen that coming, or do you think that helmet, he's coming in so fast, so hard, he ducks it, it just pops off the nose? I mean, it's a lot of force when you come screaming in there from a, from a deep position, put your helmet down on the ball. Well, I'll look at it this way too, Danny, is you're going out of bounds. You don't expect somebody to come from out of bounds to force the fumble here. Yeah, fair enough. And there, there's a good shot right there. Great camera work. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Incarnate Word. Okay, so the call will stand. UIW football. Any response to that, Danny? I, I don't, because I, I need to, I think I would have to look at it and hear what they, how they ruled on it. But it, it just, it feels like he was in out of bounds when he caused the fumble. Hmm. 
So it's UIW football. The Aggies have now lost two fumbles. One by Huntley and now one by Kayla Mills. Copeland back to throw. Home run ball downfield looking for Perry again. And this one is dropped again. That was a difficult catch. Shamad Lomax back in coverage alongside. Checked out it was McDuffie, not Perry. McDuffie almost had the catch. Great, that was great, great coverage right there. Oh, he just barely got a fingertip on that thing to knock it away. McDuffie's a big tall guy at 6'3", too. Good coverage. Incomplete again. Flag comes in, though. Jared Phipps was the man in coverage intended for Jalen Campbell. Once again, our referee today is Scott Campbell. Pass interference, number 29. Defense, spot foul, automatic, first down. What do you think there, Danny? Yeah, I think he might have got there just a tad too soon, but it was quick for sure. So it's called on Phipps, the senior out of Arlington, spot foul. And the ball is spotted at the 31, a first down and 10 for UIW. Cardinals average almost 30 points per game, 29 and a half per game this year. Throw goes near side to Brady Rogers, who we profiled earlier as an impact player. He's been heavily used recently, eight catches a week ago for Rogers. Yeah, he's their go-to guy for sure. And you know, uh, UIW, their, their, their whole mode right now is get the ball out of Copeland's hands really fast so you can't even affect the pass on your defensive line because he's just getting it out way too quick. And Copeland is saying the Aggies jumped. Ball start, number 72. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still call it on down. UIW. Call it on Brandon Flores, the center. Copeland was pointing towards the Aggie D-line. Yeah, you know, you want to put pressure on Copeland, but the ball's coming out so fast, even when you're going there, you, you got to be able to try to jump up and knock it down because you're not going to get to him. Aggies show heavy pressure. Passes intercepted. Intercepted by Jared Phipps. Just the third pick this year by the Aggies. The first pick for somebody outside of Austin Perkins. You know, one of the things I looked at coming into this week is like, how there's a, we only have two interceptions. Come on, we got to have more than two interceptions on the year. Well, now we got three. Now we have one. It comes right to you. You still got to make a play. Phipps makes the catch. Comes up there, almost got knocked down by his own man, but gets a pick. That'll help a great deal. And part of that, Adam, is because we did dial up pressure. So you had blitz coming. Copeland had to get rid of the ball quick, and it was just an errant pass. But Phipps still there to take the uh, interception. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Danny. Was that a bad read on Copeland, or was that because he was spooked by the blitz? Atkins pass incomplete, no intentional grounding. And it brings up second down and 10. I'm sure it was a little bit of bone. I think it was. I think he, we brought multiple players in on the blitz, and so there wasn't just one, but there was multiple that were going to be coming down on him hard. So he had to get rid of the ball quickly. And Jared Phipps having a strong senior year, really coming on as of late. And a flag comes in before the snap. False start, number 78. Offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. That's our Brian Trujillo, who shifts over from left tackle to left guard this week with the return of Sage Dockstatter. That's a rare miscue on Brian. You know, if that's four penalties, that's, I mean, here it is in the first quarter, and you already have four penalties. you got to clean these up, and you can't let um, UIW just kind of hang around. you gotta, you got to start moving down field here and putting some more points on the board. Atkins, a lot of time to throw so far today. He completes this pass to Robert Downs the third. So the Aggies still short of the first down. So third down and manageable coming up for Josh in the Aggie offense. A 
Robert Downs the third, a young man out of Anaheim, transfer from Fullerton Juco. Third down, eight yards to go. Pass across the middle for a first down and more. Tony Nicholson, his second receiving touchdown this afternoon. Have yourself an afternoon. Tony Nicholson on fire. He gets that pass on that deep crossing in route. You know, only one guy to beat, and he takes him to the corner. Starts with great protection for Josh up front at him. Lots of time. Look how much time he has in there. He lets the guy cross the middle clear. Defense is sitting back in the zone, and it's just all Nichols after that, taking it all the way to the end zone. 42-yard touchdown catch for Tony Nicholson. And the Aggies go ahead 14-0. His fourth and now his fifth receiving touchdowns this year. Baylor grad transfer who was an impact at Baylor. And he's been a huge impact with the Aggies this entire year. He really has. And he's the number one receiver that we have there. And so he, he was right on the spot there. Lots of time. Great throw. Takes it to the house. Josh Atkins is playing pretty well. 10 of 12, 151, two touchdowns, no picks. Very similar numbers are in pace for what he had against the last FCS opponent, which was Alcorn State. Our November 3rd last year, the most recent win for the Aggies. You know, it kind of it goes to show you what, what Josh can do having enough time. When you play Ole Miss and teams like that, they're going to be on you in a hurry, right? So there's not a lot of time to sit back there. Although he played really well there, didn't have one turnover there. Uh, but when you have enough time and, and you're able to run the routes, he can sit back there and pick apart defenses, really what he's doing right now. Do you sense, too, today that he's had a lot more time to throw? Without a doubt. I, I think he's sitting back there and feels like he has a lot more time, which makes him more confident. He just appears more confident. And that could be because of the return of Sage Dockstadter. This is the healthiest the offensive line has been all year. Now you have Dockstadter back, who's a four-year starter. Trujillo can shift over to his normal left guard position. And you go from having a lot of freshmen on that offensive line who are inexperienced, and now you have three seniors in Dockstadter, Trujillo, and Bello. So that changes a lot. You know, that offensive line has been a... Uh, um you know, a moving of the coconuts as you move them around to figure out who's going to be where. They've had to do a lot of that this year. So when you get some guys back, it's nice to uh, have some consistency up there. UIW's offense has really, really struggled. They'll go to the ground here to Kevin Brown. Sworn by three Crimson jerseys. Good runner and first down for Brown. Junior out of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Transfer from Highland Community College, who leads the Cardinals and carries in yards this year. So they're going to go with a little tempo. This is something they can do, that they can just put a little pressure on your defense there. The Aggies all over it right there. Xander Yarborough leads the charge. Roy Lopez was also alongside him. The Aggies haven't seen many passing teams this year. Pretty much every opponent has been a run-heavy offense. And Javon Ferguson talked about it this week at the weekly press conference. He said this offense is very similar to our offense, which we faced the entire preseason. So that could help here today for the Aggies defensively. Pressure from the outside from Rashi Hodge, and the pass is out of the reach of C.J. Hardy Hodge. Hurrying the quarterback again. Ah, uh, you know what? And if you don't dump that ball and get it out of your hands in a hurry, uh, Hodge will put the leather to you. You know, I, I just love watching the games where he's had some big hits. I'm just so impressed with his play that has just gotten better each week. Hodge with two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries this year. Also leads the team in tackles for loss. Cardinals 0 of 3 on a third down. Third down, nine yards to go. Pressure and a sack. Welcome back, Roy Lopez. We saw Roy Lopez in warming up. We were sitting up here watching, and we saw him dancing around, getting excited, just like that when he came up here for warm-ups. And we looked at each other saying, 
He's back. Roy Lopez is back. Look at a little spin move in there after he does a bull rush on him. Spins around and it's like, yeah, yes, I got it. I still got it. Fourth yes, quarter. you do. Time out on the field. I don't know if he is quite 100%, but Roy Lopez at 80 or 85% can really make an impact. And he still has two games left to play. This one and one more to still use his red shirt this year. 14-0 Aggies through one quarter. Roy Lopez with a big sack of John Copeland in the Aggies lead 14-0 through one here at Aggie Memorial. Jemias Williams tore his meniscus last week at Ole Miss. The Aggies were planning on using Lopez against UTEP in Liberty to finish off the year so he could keep that red shirt and then be back next year. But the Aggies had to use him this week because of the injury to Williams, Danny. So Lopez will play today and then next week, and then he is not able to play against Liberty in the finale because of the redshirt rule. Yeah, you know, we talked about it before the game started. It's like, do you do it now or do you wait? And so we, I think we both agreed. It's like, you do it now. You got to get the win. And so you got to do whatever it takes to get the win. And the depth was really hurt, too, with the injury to Jemias Williams, who's done for the year. O.J. Clark with some space. O.J. Clark to the sideline. O.J. Clark to the 30. The senior from Wichita Falls, Texas, Punt, return, touchdown. Hey, yo, when you, everything is working, it's nice. You get a punt return, you get blocking, you you just, everything comes together. It makes all the ills kind of go away, and you remember how fun this game could be. Not taking anything away from UIW, but look at the punt here. It comes up, breaks straight, and then cuts outside is what you normally do as a punt returner. He gets the lane to the outside, and he is a very quick guy, being escorted all the way in there by Jared. Nicely done. O.J. Well, Clark says, you guys always talk about Huntley and his kick returns. How about me and my punt returns? 77-yard punt return touchdown for O.J. Clark. Third most catches in program history for a career, and now he returns a punt for a score. And you've talked about this before, Danny. I've heard you say this, that these are points you don't expect, and when you get them, that's a huge bonus. It is a huge bonus, and it just really it does something to your psyche because now you start to believe again. And it's not that you were a, a disbeliever, but sometimes it, it can be hard when you're playing teams like Ole Miss and others. But when you get something good that's positive, it brings it back, and you feel the positivity that happens. And it's just like, you know what? We can get this thing, and now I know what it feels like. And it's going to be, it's going to bode quite well if they can hang on going into UTEP next week and then Liberty, they're going to be riding a high. Look at those smiles. They're having fun. And Doug Martin has said numerous times the last couple of weeks, he said these guys are not practicing like a winless team. They're still practicing hard. There's still a lot of fights. Like we said, we knew this schedule could be really beneficial down the stretch. You knew probably the, the easiest part could be in the final three. And the Aggies go ahead 21-0. Brown booms it through the end zone. And it'll be first down and 10 at the 25-yard line for the Cardinals, who only have 15 yards of total offense. The Aggies have 218. Well, you know, when everything is working, you have sacks by, um, by everyone coming back. You have kicks, you have punt returns, you got touchdown throwing, receiving, you got good running. Offside, it's just everything is working, 20. and it's uh, Kicking you got to keep on there, but Five you can't out, let your foot the off the spot. gas. First down. Only four passing yards for UIW. They average 284 passing yards per game. 381 and 349 through the air in the last two weeks. A lot of drops so far from the wideouts for the Cardinals. Heavy pressure again. Wilcox able to swarm down Copeland. Career sack number 19 no and a half for, for the senior out of Dallas, Cedric Wilcox. Tackle. The quarterback was still in the pocket. Second down. Cedric in there, he's got those big long arms and he just could not let that quarterback get away. Yeah. 
Seven yard loss on the play. Should be a three yard loss. It should be second down and 13. And off for Kevin Brown. Taken down by Javon Ferguson, who's been a tackle machine the last two years. Javon Ferguson, you know, we talked about him in the open. The senior out of Baton Rouge, he's had a great career. In on another tackle. Third down and long for UIW. Four out wide. John Copeland, the quarterback, the sophomore, gets it out quickly, and it's dropped again. Roddy McGraw able to break it up. Pass was incomplete, looking for Camden Perry. A lot of drops so far a for lot UIW. Of drops, but there's a lot of defensive uh, defenders who are right on top of him as well, so it's a quick little in route, trying to get rid of the ball before the blitz gets to him. He gets there, but you're all over top of him, and even if he gets it, he's not gotten the first down with that catch. And now O.J. Clark may get his second chance at a punt return touchdown, coming off a 77-yard punt return score just moments ago. Let's see what David Balcom, the Australian, will choose to do. More of a rugby-style kick, but Clark, who backpedals, will get a return from the 25-yard line. Changes directions, O.J. Clark with the flag down is belted out of bounds near the 20. Flag down, though, at the 24. Special teams tackle is made by Sean Holton. During the return, leave a block in the back. Number six, return team. Mm. 10 yards from the end of the run. First down, timeout. That penalty is on Andre Bodison, one of the Aggie receivers on special teams. Two receiving touchdowns for Tony Nicholson. Punt return touchdown, O.J. Clark, a pick for Phipps. All Aggies, early stages here today. Adam Young along with Danny Nee. Great to have you with us here today. This has been sun fun so far, hasn't it, Danny? Yes, it has. We haven't had a lot of these games where it's been so much fun where it's 21 nothing here in the uh, in the second quarter, but uh, let's see if they can keep their foot on the gas here. The pitch goes to Jason Huntley after the penalty on special teams by Bodison. The Aggies have been pretty successful so far on the ground. Eight carries now for Huntley, three for Gibson. One for Matt Romero, and Atkins has run the ball twice. Huntley loses one. He has 41 yards on the ground, along a 15. Huntley will stay in on second down and 11. Atkins time again. This is Terrell Warner who makes a good snag. He's been pretty active the last couple of weeks. Warner now with a catch in three straight games. You know, I, I think Josh was waiting for some of the, there was two deep routes that were taking a long time to uh, run. It was kind of a, uh, a deep post pattern and another one across the other side, neither of which were open, so he had to dump that thing off. It's a great job by Josh not to try to force that thing. Aggie's pretty good on a third down so far. Atkins will run. Flag is down. Atkins taken down from behind. Tackle was made by a redshirt sophomore and San Antonio native T.J. Wright. Holding, number 76. Offense, half the distance to the goal. Still third down. Holding the call on Sage Dockstatter, who's back this week, playing in just his second game this year. Maybe a little rust there, you know, trying to reach out there. Kind of makes it hard now, making a third and long. Oxnatter was out with a shoulder injury. High snap. Running play for Huntley. And Huntley is taken down for a loss. So a good defensive stand on this possession for the Cardinals, who have struggled at times so far. But they also haven't had a whole lot of help from their offense here today. Yeah, third and long, and he's just trying to get some extra yardage to punt the ball away there, but nothing doing. You know, good, good coverage on the defense by the Cardinals there. 
they had him pinned all the way. They're going to end up with good field position. Let's see if their offense can uh, get rolling or Aggie defense is going to stand up again. Gunnar Henderson is back deep to receive the punt. Usually the Cardinals use Jalen Jimerson in the punt return game, but he's out today. So Henderson filling in. Deisler boots it from the end zone. Not a great punt, but it takes a really nice bounce near midfield. So this will turn out to be a really good punt. And it's the long snapper, Austin Reeves, who touches it at the 50-yard line. Cardinals football at midfield when you return. Cardinals have lost three in a row after starting their season five and two. They were the Southland Conference champs a year ago at the FCS level. Their second FBS opponent this year. They opened their season with UTSA. Lone FCS opponent for the Yagis looking for their first win since November 3rd of last year when they beat Alcorn State just over a year ago. The Aggies have lost 11 in a row dating back to that game last year. Schedule has not been ideal. And the Aggies have not been home for over a month. New quarterback in for the first time in his career, Kevin Yeager will handle the play calling for UIW. And he completes his first pass collegiately to C.J. Hardy, one freshman to another. How about that coming in fresh off the bench and being able to throw one deep in there? Had coverage. You had good coverage on him as well. He just makes a fantastic throw. Look at that. Drops it right in there. He was an outstanding high school quarterback from De Leon, Texas. 6'1", 204. First snaps all year and during his entire career. Keondrick Filio, his first carry today. The power back out of Texas, biggest back for them, Danny. He's much different than Brown and King. Yeah, Filio is the power back, and usually they use him when they're coming into a short yard situation or they want to punch one in the end zone because he can bring a lot of uh, power to there, and you can see him right there pushing forward, and it's just dragging two or three Aggies with him. He's a big guy. And a player is down right now for the Aggies. Hard to tell right now who that is. You know, the Aggies haven't been in this situation before where it's been, uh, they've been up 21, uh, 21 nothing. And so they got to remember what to do when you get the lead. So you still have to play hard defensively. Not that they're not, but you, you have to be able to go attack the quarterback. You've got to stay, uh, you got to stay up on front and not let anything sneak by you. That last pass, it was McCray on coverage. He had good coverage, but that was just a great pass that dropped in there. That's Devin Richardson, the star freshman linebacker from Klein, Texas, in Klein High School, who's hobbling off with some help. What a nice surprise he's oh. been during his first collegiate season, a career-high 12 tackles last week at Ole Miss and a forced fumble. You know, all, all three of those linebackers in there, Richardson, Ferguson, Hodge, what a great job. Coach, Coach Sukup, who has the linebacker core, you know, what a, what a great job he's been able to do with them, but it sure helps when you've got great players like Devin Richardson, which I hope he gets back. So Richardson goes off, and Brennan Davis, a transfer from Tyler Juco, comes in for Richardson. Had a forced fumble two games ago against Georgia Southern. Hardy with the reception. Tackle made just short of the goal line by Cook and McGraw. You know, getting that ball out of there quick, that's what their offense does, is just catch and throw. So look for another quick pop here. Here's Keondrick Filio, lowers his shoulders, and he's in. His team high ninth touchdown this year. He's been that power back in goal line sets. And Filio gets the Cardinals on the scoreboard. You know, what, what sets that whole thing up there, and there you see Filio is going to punch this one in, but it's those that first deep pass that, that once he comes in to the game, he makes a great throw and puts him in great position, but they come back and do a couple other quick pop passes and uh, puts him in great position, but Filio is just able to punch it in for the score. So how about the quarterback, freshman Kevin Yeager, 
His first snaps collegiately, and he leads the Cardinals on their first scoring drive today. Four plays, 50 yards, a minute and 17 seconds. Philly on the run, but Jaeger led the charge. are some good finds to C.J. Hardy during the drive. Point after from Carson Moore, the freshman from the Woodlands, Texas, and it is a 14-point game. Flag does come in, though, on the point after. Offside, number one, defense. Penalty is declined, tries good. Well, it was offside on Time out on the field. Huntley checked at Ray Buford. Ray Buford whistled from offsides, doesn't matter. Penalty declined, 21 to seven. The Aggies leading UIW here at Aggie Memorial. First scoring drive of the day led by freshman Kevin Yeager. Now in at quarterback for UIW. And the Cardinals get on the scoreboard. It is 21 to seven Aggies, 9.31 left here in half one. Time now for our New Mexico State student athletes of the game. Today we recognize Austin Reeves from Aggie football, the long snapper, and Savannah Davison from Aggie volleyball. Reeves, a 382 student majoring in biochemical engineering. Davison, a 37 GPA. She also majors in biochemical engineering. New Mexico State University, be bold, shape the future. <laughs> Those are impressive GPAs, and yes, then you factor are. in the major, and that's got a wow factor to it. And while doing sports, it's, yeah. that's pretty dang good. We probably do not talk about that enough, how hard it is to juggle athletics in the classroom. Not easy. It's almost like you have a full-time job on top of your work in the classroom. We'll see how Albert handles this kickoff. He will kick off to Jason Huntley. Five career kick return touchdowns for Huntley. None this year. Ankle tackle made by Sean Holton, who's been really good on special teams today. Yeah, Sean, Sean had a good angle there and wasn't going to let Jason get that, get that corner on him there. But Jason was trying to get that corner. Man, if he does, he's off to the races. That was looking similar to his kick return touchdown to start the game last year against Alcorn State when he found the edge. Huntley will head to the sidelines, and Christian Gibson will start as the tailback. He's the pistol back behind Josh Atkins, who's had a good day. They hand it off to Gibson, and he is tackled immediately by Chance Main as a penalty marker flies in near the 30. A lot of flags here today. Seven penalties on the Aggies. See Gibson, Personal there's foul. nothing to the left. Face mask, number 95, defense. 15 yards added at the end of the run. Automatic, first down. It was Chance Main who made the tackle. He also gets whistled for a face mask penalty, the second face mask penalty on the UIW defense today. Yeah, you can't really see it there. It looked like he already released it, and it was right before that shot. 15-yard penalty, oh. automatic first down. The pass was deflected. That had trouble written all over it. They jumped that route and saw that thing coming, and it was almost a pick. There's a look at Chance Main, who's had a good year for UIW. I know a lot of folks have seen the documentary series on Netflix called Last Chance U, and Main was at Independence Community College a year ago, and he was a big part of that documentary series on Netflix. Having a breakout year here at the FCS level. Pass is caught by Nicholson, then he dropped it, he gets it back. We'll see if they call it incomplete or a fumble. It's an incomplete pass. Nicholson would have liked to fumble. Pass was incomplete, that's a rare drop for the sure-handed Nicholson. Yeah, you know, I, I thought he also had a couple of guys who were open downfield too, and he chose to take the, the check down underneath to Nicholson, who just couldn't hang on to it. Puts in a third and long. Empty backfield for redshirt sophomore Josh Atkins. Room for Nicholson. Check that, O.J. Clark. But he's gonna be about a yard and a half shy of the first down. Certainly 
a position, though, where the Yankees will go for it. And here today, they are two of two on fourth down. Wow, they're going to punt it. Certainly didn't see that happening, too. I was with you all the while. I thought, well, fine, bring Matt Romero in there and let him punch in, but maybe it's a little bit farther than what we think. And they want to pin him to get the field position. Yeah, it's a very long one, more like one and a half. So the Aggies will punt it. They were in Cardinals territory. Theisler trying to flip the field. Gunnar Henderson calls for a fair catch inside the 10. The defense has played well outside of the previous possession, which was led by freshman quarterback Kevin Yeager. I'm sure that factor is into the decision, too, is how well the defense has played overall today, Danny. Yeah, I, I think so. I think he's feeling like, you know, our defense can hold up. And, and if you do turn the ball over, let's say you didn't get that first down, you don't want to give uh, Kevin Yeager, who has a hot hand, to come in and put him at midfield. You want to make him go the whole length of the field. Um, but also you want to depend on your defense to stand up there. And, and this is what he's going to do. He's going to pin him and see if we can get field position. Devin Richardson still out of the game. So Brennan Davis is back in at Will Linebacker. Hopefully Richardson's okay. Kevin Brown on the carry, nowhere to go. Still inside the 10-yard line, a gain of one for Brown, who has over 600 rushing yards this year to pace UIW. Second down, nine yards to go for the Cardinals. Yeager, a true freshman from De Leon, Texas, came in for John Copeland, who struggled in the early going today. And they rifle a pass to Hardy as he bobbles it. That's around six or seven drops at least by the wideouts for UIW. And, and I'm not sure why, Adam, you're right. And it's, it's more than what you would think than usual, more than when any of the film that I watched on them, but it's just weird. I mean, that, that's a catchable ball right there. There's, not, there's nothing too hard about that. UIW has not converted on a third down. They are 0 of 5 on a third down. They only have 68 yards of total offense. They air it out down the field, and it is almost intercepted. Probably should have been. That's Austin Perkins, who only has one hand right now. We yeah. need to note that. He's playing with a club on his left hand. Which, which is to the club hand, if you will, side of his body that the ball went to. So maybe it's hard to just pull that thing in there. Perkins, before today, had both Aggie interceptions this year. And he's been playing with a club on his hand. He had a career-high 10 tackles last week, pretty much one-handed at Ole Miss. Balcom punts it away to midfield to O.J. Clark, who does not call for a fair catch. He gambles a lot, usually <laughs> pays off. It works. So it ended up to be a better situation. Even if Perkins could have caught that ball for an interception, we get better field position right here. Here it is coming to him. Just the guts you have to have to stand in there and make that catch when people are all around you ready to rip your head off is amazing to me. He's a confident young man, has a lot of confidence in his abilities, and we've seen him do that countless times during his career where you think, okay, he'll call for a fair catch, and he doesn't. And he's been hit pretty hard a few times because of that. Pistol back is Jason Huntley. Huntley on the give. Nowhere to go. Ankle tackle is made by Isaiah Paul. Middle linebacker, redshirt freshman from San Antonio, where UIW is located. You know, not a lot of going there with that pistol action here. You go to a pistol because you can have a little bit more time to see the holes open up. And there was just nothing that was going to open up there. There was nowhere he could go with it. Josh Atkins, 12 of 16, completes this pass to Robert Downs the third. First down and more, and that will move the chains as the Yagis look to extend their 14-point advantage. You know, I like what, what uh, Downs did after the catch there. He was coming across on a shallow in route, but instead of taking that all the way across there, he stops. It makes the defense over-pursue, which is what you saw them do right there, and it opens up for kind of pulling it back around and getting extra yardage. That's a nice job. Pressure from the front side, and Atkins wisely just tosses it out of bounds. Pressure came from the linebacker, Isaiah Paul. 
Nicholson. Number 13 was in the area. No foul for intentional grounding. Second down. The Aggies have committed two turnovers today, both on fumbles, Huntley and Mills. No interceptions for the second straight week for Atkins, who has thrown 14 this year. Lottie's in motion, four out wide. Atkins unleashes underneath. O.J. Clark, nowhere to go. It'll be a loss of one. You know, the defense that they're, they're playing there is they're sitting back in zone and not allowing anything deep or even mid. So it's just saying the only thing I'm going to give you is something underneath, which is that little crossing underneath route there. And the minute he catches the ball, they have great pursuit to the ball, and there's just not a lot happening there. The Aggies need the 18-yard line. Atkins rolling right, looking to throw. Atkins fires, incomplete. Flag is down, big hit. Might be a personal foul here. And I think the uh, boy who was on the tackle there, I think that's who it was, was saying, look, he crossed the line of scrimmage, which makes him, which makes him a, a, just a regular running back or anyone else trying to get the first down, and he's open for me to go and put a pop on him. And I think he popped up, Josh did, and threw the ball. I don't know where the line of scrimmage is, hard to tell from that. But I think that's what uh, Bowie was telling him. He's like, hey, no way. He crossed the line of scrimmage, and uh, I'm, I'm free to hit him. There's no foul for roughing the passer. However, illegal forward pass, number 14, offense. Five yards from the spot of the foul. Lost it down, fourth down. Yeah, you were right on it, Danny. He did cross the line of scrimmage and a legal forward pass, or else it was going to be roughing the passer. You can look at it here, and, and really they're sitting back. Look how they're sitting back in coverage, and there's nothing you can do there, and he's just waiting to, for something to break. It doesn't happen. He doesn't quite see where he is in relation to the line of scrimmage, so he just stepped over it, and that happens. But he did take a little pop for that. Ball is on the 31. So it would be a 48 yard field goal. Which in pregame, you, you did note yeah. that, uh, that he did have a distance, but I think what coach is gonna do is gonna say, look, if we throw it down there and they pick one deep, it doesn't matter, it was like a punt. Fourth and 12, the Aggies will go for it. Atkins deflected, then caught right at the marker. It'll depend on the spot. Nichols in the catch. They spot it right at the marker. And that's a great catch by Tony. One of the hardest things to do when the ball is zipped in there and Joss zips this one in there is that as soon as it's popped off, it throws your eyes off and everything else, and you have to keep focused on the ball to bring it in, and he did that. Barely short, though, huh? This play is under further review. Yeah, they're going to check it to see if that's a good spot and if it should be first down. So they're going to check this. And, you know, Tony did the right thing there, Nicholson. He, he sits back there. He knew where the uh, first down marker was. He runs his route, and he's past the first down marker. But when the ball is tipped, it's open for everyone to go get the ball. And his job is now to make sure that he catches it or no one catches it. So he came back to the ball, which made him very close to the first down marker. Still a great job and a great catch there. Really good concentration by Tony Nicholson as we see the replay again. Deflected, hangs in the air, and so often this year when a pass has been deflected, it's been intercepted. How many times, how many times finally does that catch a break? Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And you know, and uh, and those things can be game changers too when it does get does get deflected. We saw some at Liberty, for instance, where things get deflected, and so a lot of things can happen there. But Tony did a great job concentrating. You're right, Adam. It was deflected by Isaiah Paul. Linebacker has been really active here today. It was right around the marker, so they're going to check to see if 
It'll stand as turnover on downs, or if the Aggies did reach the yards needed. After review, we're going to put the ball at the 17 and a half yard line, and we're going to measure for a first down. There you go. That might be enough for the first down, Danny. It sure looks that way. Yeah, I think the 17 and a half should give the Aggies a first down. They're going to bring out the chains and measure. And if this holds, the Aggies are three of three on fourth down today. We were surprised they went for it. It would have been a 48 yarder for Dylan Brown, who was making them 51 52 during warm ups. Yeah, Easy plenty day. of room. Easy day. Plenty of room. Fourth and 12, no problem. Danny, every single time I see the chains come out for a measurement, I think back to 2017 when they were measuring for a first down against South Alabama in that game. Oh, that, yes. That clinched a bull bit. Yes, indeed. Every single game I watch, I think of that now. So the Aggies march on. Christian Gibson will stay in at running back. 13 first downs for the Aggies, only four for the Cardinals. Adkins rolling to his left, and he whistles it out of bounds on the sideline. Making very no good decisions the today, not really the gambling. The ball across the line of and so far, no down. interceptions for Josh. Yeah, you know the Cardinals are sitting back there, sitting back there. It looks like a three deep kind of zone coverage where you're not, and they're right on the goal line, so they're not letting anyone deep in there, so they're waiting. Sweep handoff, Jason Huntley fighting space. Taken down by Ian Peterson, who got his ankles, transfer from Kansas. And it's going to bring up third down for the Aggies, and it looks like six yards to go. That's a nice job by Huntley right there because you want to be able to shorten that third down, and in order to do that, Huntley's got to go get some positive yards. It didn't look like there was a lot, a lot there on that play, but he's still able to turn that into four good yards or five good yards. Adkins with time unloads to Huntley, who's belted by Phillips right as he caught it. And now the Yankees will use Dylan Brown for a field goal. You know, he had Tony Nichols off to the right that was running a quick out there, and Tony was wide open, and I think he just dumped it off quickly and didn't see Tony, but gives Dylan a chance to get on the board as well. 30-yard field goal try here for Dylan Brown. Made a 34-yarder last week, his only attempted field goal in the last three weeks. The kick for Brown is good. Sneaks it in, the right upright. Dylan Brown now 8 of 11 on field goal tries this year. The Aggies extend their lead to 17. Now a three-possession game again. Yeah, you know, three-possession, and that's, that's good, but it feels like our... our um the, mo the momentum or the the way that the team is working on offense is just kind of slowed a little bit. Looked a little clunky the last couple of possessions as opposed to when everything was rolling and they were just popping and seeing everything down the field. They've, they've really shut off anything deep covered, deep patterns, and the run, there's not a lot of run, so it leaves us with these little dump passes that are getting two or three yards, and it's hard to get into the end zone on two or three yard little dump passes. Nine plays, 31 yards, three minutes and 21 seconds. A 30-yard made field goal for Brown after the Aggies converted on fourth and 12. By the way, we're not even at halftime yet, and this is just the third game this year where the Aggies have scored 20-plus points. And they have 24 with four minutes left in half one. Dylan Brown with the kickoff, and this one, again, will not be returnable. Josh Atkins, 16 of 22 for 188, two scores, 49 yards on the ground for Huntley, two touchdown catches for Nicholson. 
And UIW has struggled defensively, although they have picked up two turnovers. But on offense, it's just been sloppy. John Copeland was 2 of 12. Kevin Yeager has been better. He led the only scoring drive for UIW. A lot of drop passes and not a whole lot so far in the running game. And it is still Yeager. Dumps it off on a screen pass. Tackle made by new Will linebacker Brennan Davis as he takes down Caleb Ducros, seldom used freshman from Houston, Texas. You know, Brennan made a good move in there. He had a little swim move as a, someone came out to block him to get around that block to go make that tackle. So he's stepping in there. You know, a lot of times you just need a chance to get in there and make something happen. And this is, uh, this is Kevin's ch uh, Brennan's chance to get in there and make something happen. And finally, a catch is made out wide by a wide receiver for UIW. Reeled in by Jalen Campbell, who had four catches, 68 yards, and a TD last week against Stephen F. Austin. Jaeger now four of six. Rolling left out of the pocket. Sends it downfield, and it's oh. almost intercepted. That was Austin Perkins again, who's been close to two interceptions today, playing one-handed. Did someone touch that or, or uh, tip that thing? Because I thought he was coming in there like he had spied that and he was going to rip it down and take it back the other way. I don't know if someone just tipped it right at the end, right at the very end of it, as you can see him come screaming in there, at the top of your screen. Yeah. Yep, that's what happened. Aggie show heavy pressure. And the pass is off the paw of Rodney McGraw, who's seeking his first career interception. And now Jaeger making some poor decisions at the quarterback position. Just trying to dump the ball off as quick as possible and just didn't quite, he wasn't on the same page as Perry. I think he was thinking that Perry was going to keep going a little bit on that little curl route. He didn't do it. He just stopped. Cardinals 0 of 6 on a third down. And now they're 0 of 7. Pass incomplete. Again, they were looking for Perry, who's been targeted more than anyone today for the Cardinals. You know, good defense. Lots of pressure there on, uh, on the new quarterback, Jaeger. Didn't quite get to him, but he's getting rid of the ball so fast that you really, you really have to work hard to get up into his face and make something happen. Maybe that made him rush it just a little bit. O.J. Clark had a 77-yard punt return touchdown earlier, but right now it is Tony Nicholson who is back deep, the former All-Big 12 punt returner. Nicholson backpedaling, will return this one. Nearly gets his legs taken out, and the Aggies will start inside their own 10-yard line. So no Clark, it's Nicholson instead with 2.42 left, and that's where the Aggies will start. At the 10-yard line, looking to extend their 24-7 lead. That's always scary when you see a leg go high yeah. in the air like that. And you know what happens usually is you have that leg planted, and you hit someone, on, gets hit on that knee there, it hyperextends your leg, which moves backwards, so it really is a painful injury. So uh, he bounced up, though. Let's see if he can get back in the game here and make something happen. It'll get near the uh, end of the second quarter. Team high, four catches for O.J. Clark, three for Nicholson, two of them for touchdowns. Another toss to Huntley, and Huntley has the ball jarred loose. It bounces out of bounds near the 20. They're going to mark Huntley down to the 16. He picks up a half dozen on the first down run. Rolling on the fields, a fumble forward out of bounds. We're going to bring it back to the spot of the fumble. Wind the clock. Here, here's a little quick toss sweep to the outside there. We miss a block game on the clock point of attack. Please put 238 on the game clock, and we're going to wind on my signal. 238. Getting the clock right there. UIW already has two fumbles, one from Huntley, one from Caleb Mills. Two, three, eight. Two, three, eight. Only one of them was forced, though, the one by Mills. Huntley's was him reaching for the pylon. It turned into a touchback. There we go. Clock operator thought 248. 
But it's supposed to be 2.38, clock moving. Lottie was in motion. Lottie's wide open near side. Atkins waited too oh. long. Now he throws on the other side of the field for O.J. Clark. Yards after the catch for O.J. with the first down up to the 24-yard line. Gain of nine for O.J. Look, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but at the bottom of the screen here, Jared White was wide open right to the left. You can't really see it, and he elected to go back to uh, dump the ball off to O.J., but Jared was sitting there with his hands swinging in the air saying, it's me, I'm open all day. That was not an easy throw for Atkins on the other side of the field. Streak in route caught. Robert downs the third into Cardinal territory. Nice little crossing route across the middle. Hits, the, hits him right in the hands. He sees lots of green in there. And the next thing is you want to turn it upfield and get as many as you can, and there's the next play. Screen pass is caught by Terrell Warner, his second grab today. Only had three catches the entire year before this one today. There's a pass right there. Green, nothing all day long, but you want to make sure you get in there and take care of the football as well. That's a nice, that's a nice grab right there. That could be his longest. Injury timeout, UIW player, slow to walk off, Sean Holton, freshman from Fort Worth. Walking off to the Cardinals sideline. They're without Jalen Jimerson in the secondary today, without Trey Richardson. And then on offense, they're without wide receivers, Kim Williams and Lamont Johnson. So some injuries today for UIW. Yeah, Holton wow. was taken out pretty good right there. Atkins throws it near side of the field. Robert downs the third again, and you see Phillips trying to strip it loose. They're taught to do that. Yes, they are, and they've, they've got a lot of turnovers to show that they're pretty good at it as well, and so I'd like Robert Downs taking two hands on that thing and making sure he takes care of the football after the catch. Final 70 seconds in the first half. The Aggies trying to score into halftime. Atkins deep for Isaiah Lottie. He hangs onto the football inside the red zone. That's where you that's where you're finding that little zone. I mean they're playing a zone in there and you find that little area that crease that you can just kind of sneak into. And he hit him right across the middle as he's coming across that zone, right in front of the safeties that are back deep there in that deep coverage. Timeout is called after the Lottie catch. And Josh Atkins has really spread it out today. Downs, a lot of action. He has five catches now. Clark's been good. Nicholson, Lottie, Huntley. A lot of guys targeted today. Caleb Mills as well. Yep, Lottie just gets the ball right across the middle there, and he's, uh, he's had a great career here as well. Lottie, four catches for 21 yards at Ole Miss last week. His best game was our last telecast, Danny, all the way back over a month ago when he had 74 receiving yards against Liberty. We've seen him make some really big catches during his career. Ball is at the 14-yard line. Atkins towards the end zone looking for O.J. Clark, and it wasn't timed well. He overthrows his senior wide receiver target. They haven't brought a, a blitz much today, but that time there was a blitz. We had an empty backfield, so there's no one to pick up the blitz, and Josh had to just kind of time that thing to throw it out there, and he wasn't quite through his route, and that's why it just came so foul incomplete. This time a slant route for Clark, and it's broken up by Ashton Preston, senior from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So now third down and 10 after two straight incompletions from Atkins looking for O.J. Clark on both. They motion Gibson back to the backfield and they will give it to Gibson and there is nothing there. And that will be a loss of Timeout. five yards. So State. second and a half, 30 seconds in life. 40 seconds left. Dylan Brown is back out for another field goal try. 
I think coach was thinking since the last few plays have been passes that they were going to sit back in a zone and going to really back off deep and not let them try to get that first down. And it would open up that little quick little run in there, but yeah, nothing being. So you end up losing a few yards here and gives uh, Dylan a little more of a challenge, but I think he's up to it. The Aggies have the football to start, so the Cardinals will get the football to start half two. They're already on their second quarterback today. John Copeland struggled early, and we were told before the game that there's a chance that Kevin Yeager, the true freshman, would play today. And because Copeland was struggling, they brought in Yeager. And he's the one who led the Cardinals on their lone scoring drive. Thirty-six yard field goal try for Dylan Brown. Straight on out of the hold of Luke Wilson. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is no good. Brown hooked it. One for two today. It's kind of disheartening as you're coming into the uh, into the second quarter in the halftime where you can't get any points on the board and you have a good drive. You're moving the ball. You're going all the way down the field. Let's see where the, the kick is here and, and see if he just, just kind of, kind of curved on him right at the end there. But yeah, you know, you come down near the end of the second the second quarter, coming into halftime, you want to come with something positive happen, and then you have this great drive, and it just kind of feels like it fizzled there for a second. I just, you know, you got to make sure your defense stands up here and don't give them anything before we're going into halftime. Danny, even his made field goal earlier, just snuck through the right upright. He hooked that one a little bit as well, and this one was a little further than his 30-yard make earlier. So now UIW with a shot to put points on the scoreboard here in the final 40 seconds. And Javon Ferguson says, no, sir. Playing with passion as he always does. And Cornet Ward, first of the half, 30 so seconds in line. On the carry. And a timeout is called with 29 seconds left. So Javon Ferguson, 12 tackles last week. That's amazing. Let's see Javon right here and come screaming up there. Oh, it's like, yeah, this is my area of operation. You're not running in there. We had Javon this week at the weekly press conference and he speaks as well as anybody, he says all the right things, still working hard, still playing hard, still a lot to play for. You know there is no give up in this guy. Young man out of Baton Rouge who's grown a ton on and off the field during his four years. He's turned into a leader, one of the faces of this program. Fun guy to watch every single Saturday for sure. Jaeger back to throw, front side pressure from Matt Young. And the pass is dropped again. It was jungled by Jalen Campbell. Yeah, I get that there's a lot of pressure on, on the quarterback, but but some of those that are that are just being dropped, I'm sure coach is going to have a word or two about me. you got to hang on to some of those things. It changes the whole complexion of the game. Nice pressure by Matt Young, though. Copeland and Jaeger are a combined 6 for 22, and a lot of that isn't on them. It is third down for the Cardinals. Amir King. Nowhere to go. Roy Lopez right there. So is Miles Veen and Austin Perkins from his secondary position. And the Cardinals will have to punt with 12 seconds left. Timeout, New Mexico State, last of the half. The Aggies 30 use seconds. a timeout. Who knows, Danny, they might get a shot. Well, if you can get in field. Field position, at least you can take one or two shots in there. You on the game clock, to, please. To, uh, 17. Pretty good long field goal or something, or at least take a Hail Mary shot at it. It's Tony Nicholson who will return the punt again as they put a few more seconds back on the clock. So 17 seconds, and Doug Martin and Strength coach Don Decker were both pointing at the scoreboard saying the clock kept on moving, so they get that corrected. And 17 seconds is put on the clock. How would you handle this if you're the punter David Balcom? Out of bounds, 
all day long. Do not kick it to, do not let a, a return be set up. Keep it away. Make sure that you're pinning them and get it to the, get the ball to the sidelines. And he's going to kick it middle of the field. So Tony Nichols in a lot of room on the far side. He will change directions, run forward. He takes a lot of time here. And the clock will stop at four seconds. And I highly doubt the Aggies will do much with that. It's been a good first half here today. The Aggies outscored the Cardinals 14-0 in the first quarter. And they've outscored UIW 10-7 here in the second quarter. Punt return touchdown of 77 yards for O.J. Clark. Two receiving touchdowns for Tony Nicholson. And a 30-yard made field goal for Dylan Brown. Touchdown run for Keondrick Filio for UIW. Run here for Christian Gibson, who can pad his stats a little bit as the time expires for the first half. And we'll wait for half Coach time. with the Aggies ahead 24-7. Good first half, Danny. Yeah, that's a, that's a good first half. It's nice to be able to take a lead into the, half into the uh, locker room. It's not a position that we've been in too much this season, so it's it's good to get in there, regroup, and come back out here and put some crispness, crispness back on some of the offense and uh, see if you can't put some more points on the board. The Aggies looking for their first win of the season. 352 total yards for the Aggies, only 86 so far for UIW. Adam Young, Danny Nee with you, Coach. And uh, your thoughts on Josh Atkins leading your offense so far, Coach? You know, he's made some good decisions. We've got to protect a little bit better, and, you know, we've got to run the ball a little bit better. And then, you know, same thing with the turnovers. I mean, we've got 14 more points if we don't turn the ball over. Hey, Coach Danny Nee, defense looking strong out there. Nice to have some folks back in that defense. Yeah, it helps when you're healthy. You know, Sage Dockstad are back and Roy Lopez back and, you know, some of those guys, Perkins in the secondary. We just, you know, we've got to pressure these guys, and we're, we're getting there a little bit. We've got to get there a little bit more. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thanks, guys. Aggie head coach Doug Martin. The Aggies had 24 to 7 here at halftime. Big half for Atkins, Nicholson, and Huntley. We're back for halftime activities after this. Aggies getting ready for half number two on a mid 60s Saturday afternoon here at Aggie Memorial. Today's game is sponsored by Memorial Medical Center. The Aggies have outgained the Cardinals by a bunch. 352 for the Aggies, only 86 for UIW. And a lot of those 86 came on one possession on their scoring drive, which was four plays for 50 yards. Passing wise, 66 yards. They are six of 22. There has been numerous drops and the Aggies have committed a couple turnovers. And as coach said, Danny, during our halftime interview, this could be a lot more than 24 for the Aggies. Yeah, I think, you know, defensively, they got to get to get to the quarterback a little bit better than they have that he mentioned. But also, I think they have to finish a couple of drives if they started and the score would be a little bigger here. So you still have to play a second half because the Carnegie word is not going away. So you still have to play tough. I think one of the biggest bright spots here today is we have seen Josh Atkins comfortable in rhythm with his wide receivers, spreading the ball to a number of different guys. And no turnovers, that's huge. No turnovers. Makes a difference for sure. Atkins 21 of 29 for 258. Huntley 55 on the ground. Gibson 19 on the ground. 17 of those on the final run of the half. Five catches for Downs, five catches for Clark, three for 90 yards for Tony Nicholson, including two touchdowns. You know, one of the areas that I think that I'd, I'd, I'd would like to see the Aggies kind of get back and do something with was, was the running piece of it. I think a couple times that I don't think the running game got going as much as they really like. and ended up having to throw the ball around quite a bit. So I think if they focus a little bit more on that and try to run the ball, which may loosen it up a little bit for that pass in there, maybe get them out of that deep coverage, uh, that zone that they're playing. to Corey Tolds and Gunnar Henderson back deep on the Dylan Brown kickoff. There has not been a return yet today for UIW. 
Cardinals in danger of losing their fourth in a row. They were ranked in the top 25 at the FCS level, but they have struggled recently, losing three straight after starting five and two. Their lone FBS game before this one was against UTSA. They lost that one 35 to seven in the season opener. And they're gonna make a switch again at quarterback. They're gonna give John Copeland the football to start half number two. So Copeland began the game. He's the star sophomore. Freshman Kevin Yeager came in and went four of 10. Copeland two of 12 for just four yards and a pick. Are you surprised by this, Danny? Yeah, just a little bit, but, but Copeland is, um, he's capable, no doubt about it. That was bobbled initially and then caught. You know, some of that is that maybe they make a change and a lot of passes were being dropped, but I'm not sure that Copeland was, that was, that was his problem with some of the passes. But sometimes the change makes it all kind of mix up again. So Copeland comes out, completes the first one. Colby Anthony with his first catch today. Heavy pressure on the front side and Brown has nowhere to go. Roy Lopez right there to meet him. No, Brown Roy. hasn't done much on the ground today. Seven carries for 26 yards. Roy Lopez has been dominating up front there. There's nothing happening right there. Lopez playing in just his second game of the season. Check that his third game, but really his second full game this year. Played some snaps against Georgia Southern two games ago. Injured his leg in week one at Washington State. Copeland, far side of the field, incomplete. Wow. Broken up by Jared Phipps, who had a pick earlier intended for Campbell. You know, that's, that's a good pattern. It's a good pass, but the defense was also really good in there. Phipps gets that one hand in there that tips that thing away. He doesn't touch that. It could pull that down for a big, big catch. That's just good defense right there by Jared. Feeling good after his pick, right? He got an interception. Mm -hmm. It's like, I got this. I can do this. Another three and out for UIW. The Aggies have used both Clark and Nicholson in the return game. This is Clark, who had a 77-yard punt return touchdown to start quarter two. This time he will call for a fair catch. We haven't seen that much this year, but he calls for a fair catch at the 23-yard line. I like that, that's a, that's a good decision because it gives them a starting at a good position. You don't pin the offense where they're really working from behind, really your own end zone. So it allows them to uh, start from a decent field position to make something happen at the beginning of the half. The Aggies combined for 186 passing yards the last two weeks, that's all. Today they have 258. So a big game for Josh Atkins. They will run on first down with Jason Huntley he was grabbed by his jersey, and he gets all the way up to the 32-yard line. Gain of nine, one yard shy of the first down. Some yards after the initial hit by Huntley. Uh, you know, the, this is just determination right there. So nothing going on the inside. He bounces that outside. They grab something. They grab his jersey. They grab, I don't know what that is, but it's broken. And now Huntley is taken down for a loss of a yard. Back to the 31. And it's going to be third down and two. The Aggies need the 33. Atkins will throw it on a third and two, and the Aggies get it. Reception by Robert Downs the third, who's led the Aggies here today with a half dozen receptions. You know, that's nice, that slant is just, it's just a safe pattern right there, coming back right at Josh, right across the middle there. You just gotta hang on to the ball because you know you're gonna take a pop, and he knew that. He double hand that thing and make sure it's not gonna pop out of there. Atkins following his wide receiver, Keila Mills. Andre Bodison was out there to block as well. That was a design run for the Yankee quarterback, Josh Atkins. We've seen Andre Bodison more this week than usual. Senior wide receiver who was the wing back in the previous pattern. And now Bodison will head off the field as Isaiah Lottie comes in in the slot. Pistol back is Christian Gibson. They give it to Gibson as he powers ahead. Gibson is up to the 41 and a half yard line, a gain of 
three plus for Gibson, the senior running back out of Dallas. You know, Christian Gibson is just a hard runner, especially going north and south. And he pours it in there, and he'll get you every single yard that's available. I like that. Just a good, strong, dependable runner. The Aggies 3 of 10 on a third down. Cardinals 0 of 9 on third down today. Atkins under pressure, and he's taken down. Kalechi and Labechi, his team best fifth sack this year. Young man from Pearland, Texas. Throws a little spin move on Jalen Guerrero on the outside there to the, to the right of the screen. And you can see him coming in off that little spin move and makes a great sack. I don't know if there's a better name out here today than Kalechi well, and Labechi. You know what, that's the third time you said, and I'm, I'm impressed that you nailed it three times in a row. Well, thank you, partner. It was, a, it was a great sack, but a great job by you. You had a nice assist there. Puts us in a punting position. Not sure that's what we wanted on our first possession. Not many punts today for Theisler. This one is a boomer as Gunnar Henderson has to call for a fair catch all the way back at the 10. Flipping field position is Theisler. Unofficially a 54 yard punt. Cardinal football after this. Great day for the Aggie defense so far, led by senior Javon Ferguson, who has a team-high six tackles. And he spoke to us at the weekly press conference this week about leaving a legacy here at NM State. To the culture of, of the defense, the linebackers, uh, even the team as a whole, sometimes your legacy and sometimes what you leave with the program is not always going to be stats. It's not always going to be what the record was when you were there. It's about the, the tone that you set when you were there. And uh, it, can, it can touch maybe two or three young guys, but if those two or three young guys can, you know, adapt to what I was trying to set when I was here, that can change your whole program. Big completion by John Copeland to Mark Sullivan to start this drive for UIW. The first catch today for the sophomore from San Antonio who did not have a catch last week against Stephen F. Austin. All the way down to the 44 and the Aggies sack Copeland again. Matt Young finished it off. Javon Ferguson started it. It's just a nice job right there. Lots of pressure. You know, there's one way to help the defensive backfield out is to put pressure on the front there. You see Hodge coming in there as well, but you see all the Aggies in there pushing and shoving. There's Matt Young to finish it off. That's a great job right there of really helping to uh, kind of defer the big long pass they just had because that's a heck of a, of a sack right there. Loss of seven. Matt Young playing at a really high level right now. He had a career high 16 tackles last week. Lopez is chasing Copeland, so is Young, who sends Copeland out of bounds. Matt Young really didn't have much of a role early on this year. He has a big role now, Danny. Yeah, I, we talked about it before the game started, of uh, how he really turned it on when he came in and created a fumble. But since then, he's been all over the field doing a great job. Last week, 16 tackles. That's amazing right there. Matt Young is doing a fantastic job and has earned every single minute that he has on the field. Loss of one again, third and 18. Cardinals 0 of 9 on third down. They've used two quarterbacks today, Copeland and Jaeger. Copeland a sophomore, Jaeger a freshman. Both out of Texas. Copeland in trouble again, incomplete. And guess who took him, took him down from behind after the throw? That was Matt Young again. Yeah, Matt Young was spying him right there. Pulls off his block, and he knew he, gonna, he knew he was going to get rid of the ball, and he just dove out there to knock him down. That's just great pressure and great defense as well. That's great defense on, the, on Brennan's part right there. Pass was intended for Perry. Brennan Davis playing a big role now with Devin Richardson injured in the After first the half. Play was over on sportsmanlike conduct, incarnate word, head coach, coming out on the field to protest a call. 15-yard penalty, fourth down. We're gonna do it. So an unsportsmanlike penalty on second year Cardinals head coach Eric Morris, who came on the field following the play. After the play was over, sportsmanlike conduct, number 15, 
incarnate word, using vulgar language towards an official. Half the distance to the goal, fourth down. Things are falling apart right now for UIW. Yeah, I think right now we're, we're in a position during sporting events that officials are gonna try to keep complete control of everything, right? So if things have happened recently, that's just like, no, we're not gonna let this thing get out of control. I have a hard time believing that Coach Morris was, was out there in the field. I didn't see it, but barely he did. So he got on the field, they have to throw a penalty. But after that, the other things that, that come of it, you have to be able to just maintain your composure and not let uh, things get away from you because now you've just pinned, after a big pass play, you pinned your team. Ball goes from the 34 all the way down to the nine. The player penalty was on Jalen Campbell. Dangerous snap, nearly a block, and a flag is down. Flag is down in the end zone. The Aggies were trying to block it. Let's see if it is roughing the kicker or running into the kicker. You know, I think he ran into his plant leg, so it, it may be roughing, roughing the kicker. Which would be an automatic first down. Right, so it makes a difference. Bobbled kick, trying to get in there to get a block. I believe that was Juwan Price. Freshman running back has been really good on special teams on the penalty. Running into the kicker, number 32. Receiving team, that penalty is declined. First down. All right, so running into the kicker, which is a five yard penalty. Roughing the kicker would have been first down. They declined the penalty. It's Aggie football near the 46 when we come back. Senior Tempe, Arizona native Roy Lopez making a huge impact here today. He's playing in his third game this year. Lopez second on the team at tackles with four today. One sack, one tackle for loss. And he's taken advantage of this new redshirt rule where if you play in only four games, you can redshirt and come back for another year. So Lopez will do that. He can only play in one more game after today. He will not play in the finale against Liberty. He's been a big boost today, Danny. Yeah, he has. And, and uh, it's good to, to know that he can get back in there and mix it up and be such a a playmaker for us defensively. Adam Young along with Danny Nee, and today's game is brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. Aggies 0-9, Cardinals 5-5. Five five. UIW really struggling here today. The Aggies had 24-7. They led to start 21-0. The Aggies will start at the 46. Jason Huntley on the carry. And Huntley only gets one yard up to the 47. That's his 15th carry today, 64 yards with a long of 15 for the senior from Arlington. You know what, uh, UIW is playing tough up front there. You know, I, somehow I thought they'd come in and they could run the ball a little bit more than they've been able to do. That front four has done a heck of a job and the backers coming in to fill as fast as they have as well. Nicholson, Bodison, Clark. Out wide at wide receiver for the Aggies. Underneath, pass is caught by Andre Bodison. His first catch this year. Seeing a lot of action here today. A senior out of Palm Coast, Florida. Nice to getting in there. You know, they, they are forcing him. They're giving him everything underneath. They're going to play back deep, and he's got to dump it off. And so, like, nice after yard run and way to hang on the ball a little helicopter action there gibson on the ground he's had a good day today christian gibson able to break a tackle before he's taken down from behind nice run for gibson who wasn't used very much last week danny only two carries last week for six He's had a good day today. Here's, you know, Gibson will give you everything. We've talked about it. He's a determined runner, and right there at the end, you get one arm out there, and it's not going to bring him down. It's like a bowling ball right now. Gibson, a good carry on first down. All the way down to the 20, gain of eight. Six touchdowns last year for Gibson, a breakout year. He has not scored yet. 
You would love to see him get in the end zone a few times here in the final three. Right back to Gibson on this second down run. And he's going to be one yard shy of the yardage needed. Boy, Chance Maine has played a heck of a game defensively. He came from the top of the of the uh, of the of the screen here and made a great tackle. Good pull there by Atkins. If he doesn't pull that, Gibson's probably going to be stuffed. But Atkins, with a quality decision to slide for the first down. And also knowing where that first down marker is too, right? So if you start your slide too soon, they can mark you short. He pulls that thing out there. There's Chance coming down screaming to make a tackle, and he just pulls it out, gets the first. First and 10 from the 17-yard line. Sideline pass to the running back, Huntley. Right there to make the stop is Chris Thomas alongside Jarek Petrie. I think it's important that they get seven here on this when they've been down in the red zone before and haven't been able to come, come, uh, come away with seven. They need to do that. Atkins unloads to the end zone and he overshoots the tall wide receiver Andre Bodison, who is 6'4", 205. He can be that big target the Aggies need right now. Yeah, that was going to be a tough pass anyway, and I think he placed Josh, paced the ball where if Bodison couldn't get to the ball, it was going to be out of bounds, which it, which it was. Empty backfield, Christian Gibson, the running back, is in the slot to the near side. And Atkins finds Caleb Mills, who holds in his first catch today. And it's going to be a little more than two yards shy, a long two shy of the first down marker. And the Aggies bring Dylan Brown out for the field goal try. 28-yarder, Brown made from 30. He missed from 36. Out of the hold of Luke Wilson, right on the money. He hooked his first couple. That one was pure right down the middle for Dylan Brown. Came into this game with only seven made field goals all year in nine games. He's made a pair today. And Brown extends the Aggie lead to 20. 64 yards on the ground for Jason Huntley, 54 on the ground for Christian Gibson. Both running backs are playing well for the Aggies, who have 125 yards rushing against this UIW defense. The Aggies ahead 27 to 7. Danny, you talked to their running backs coach this week, Matt Christian. I, I spoke with Matt, and I like Matt. Matt was a quarterback here, still holds one of the records in 2011 for a big season he had there through for 2,400 yards. But I asked Matt about the attitude of the players. First of all, I had to tell him I appreciate how rough and tumble a player he was mm -hmm. as an Aggie. So I appreciate that as a former Aggie as well. But I said, tell me about your running backs. He had nothing but great things to say about Huntley and Gibson. He talked about their leadership. He talked about the importance of being a good person on the field and off the field. And Adam, that does my heart well because I want them to do well on the field, but I want to make sure that they're not knuckleheads off the field. And he said, these are yes sir, no sir guys, and they're just fantastic. And he's been really loved his opportunity to coach them. And I really appreciated that. Two of the best quarterbacks in school history are actually on staff right now. You have Matt Christian, who's the running backs coach, Chase Holbrook, who is the quarterbacks coach, and then Doug Martin, of course, played the quarterback position in college. There's a lot of pretty nice quarterback minds in that room this year. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I, and, and when I talked to, to uh, uh, Matt about being a quarterback and some of the quarterback plays this year, he was careful not to say or tread into anyone else's area, and he stuck to his, which is the running back mm -hmm. piece of it, and I appreciate that. Matt Christian has also been a key player in special teams as a coach for the Aggies this year. Brennan Davis with a fierce tackle of Brady Rogers had him in midair as he took down the freshman UIW wide receiver. Brennan Davis has been just fine filling in for Devin Richardson who was injured in half one.
Quarterback is John Copeland, who did not play a ton in the first half. Kevin Yeager got a lot of snaps as well, and Copeland's been the guy here in half two. That's good enough for a first down for UIW with Kevin Brown on the ground. You know, Brendan Davis getting an opportunity to play here as, as Javon Ferguson is going to graduate. He's a senior, and you're left with two guys that are that are dominant in Hodge and Richardson. And there's one more spot that's open, so, you know, it, it bodes well for him to play big right now to know that he maybe has a shot at one of the other open spots. Speaking of Hodge, he was injured in that play, Danny, so he's out of the game now, and Jonathan Hood has to come in at Sam linebacker. So the Yankees very young at the linebacker, linebacker position right now, or at least I should say a little inexperienced, not really young, with Davis and Hood on the outside of Mike linebacker, Javon Ferguson. And Copeland taken down one-handed by Xander Yarborough, the tight end turned defensive lineman. You know, all, all I can say is, Adam, when, when everybody gets in and gets a sack, you know, he's, he doesn't want to be left out of it. And he puts that big paw in there and drags him down one-handed for sure, coming off there. May got a fistful there. Yarborough, a San Antonio native who knows UIW very well. Dump ball pass goes to the running back, Kevin Brown. Wow. Breaks Davis's tackle before he is wrestled down by Rodney McGraw. Strong safety out of the Aggie secondary. You know, Brown's running hard, too. You, again, we talked about how some of the uh, – Gibson is a strong runner. Brown is a strong runner, and if you don't tackle him, he's not going down. Aggies came in there, one-armed him. It's like, no way, I'm not going down, and he just kept pushing along. UIW 0 for our third down today, 0 for 9. They need the 45-yard line. There's head coach Eric Morris in year two with this air raid offense that has struggled today. Only 119 total yards. Copeland completes the pass. First down. Pass was caught by Colby Anthony, senior from Katy, Texas. Throws a good ball there. Now they're going with a little tempo action here. Here it is, the last play. We're trying to go get him, have a blitz called, and so you end up with... Uh, some man coverage and he breaks free and he completes the pass. Screen pass on the outside caught. Extra yardage there for Jalen Campbell. And the chains will move again as UIW moves with tempo. Ball placed at the 36. First and 10 for UIW. Copeland has not led a scoring drive today. The only scoring drive for UIW was led by Kevin Yeager. Powering straight ahead, Amir King. Sophomore running back from Freeport, Texas, who's the most active running back for UIW in the passing game, and he runs this one for seven yards. Seems like they got, they got their running, they got their throwing game going. Everything is clicking. Campbell's in motion. They run it with King again. And he's taken down an ankle tackle by Rodney McGraw, but plenty enough for a first down as King picks up five yards. And now he will head off, and Kevin Brown replaces him. Dawson Keir is in at wing back to block. Copeland to the end zone, and the pass is batted away. Shamad Lomax in coverage. Shamad Lomax in good position on that thing. He rips his head around there quickly. One on one, it's on an island. You got to make the play, or it's six. He whips his head around there and knocks it down, knocks it away. Shamad Lomax, that's great coverage right there. Now Dawson Keir heads off. Dawson Keir is a backup center offensive lineman, 280 pounds, who they use at times as a fullback. He has to switch jersey numbers when he comes in as a fullback. Copeland pulls it, fires, caught. This is Gunnar Henderson, his first catch today. Had a 31-yard catch last week against Stephen F. Austin. 
You know, the, what they're doing is they're running that little play action across the middle there, and it's drawing in the linebackers, and he's dumping it right over the linebackers because the linebackers have to come up and respect that play action up there. Copeland looking left, throws left, incomplete. First time he has targeted redshirt freshman Marquez Perez this afternoon. Second down and 10 for UIW. Copeland under pressure from Javon Ferguson. Gets rid of it out of bounds. Another quarterback hurry for the Aggies. This one from JV. That's a nice job there. There was nowhere he can go with the ball. So part of that is that uh, Ferguson has pressure, but also good coverage on the backside by the Aggies because there's nowhere he can place the ball. Everyone is covered. Everyone's covered on the left side of your screen that you can't see. Everyone on the, on the front side of the screen that you can see are covered. He had to throw the ball away. Cardinals had their first third down conversion all day on this drive. They are one of 10. This is the best we've seen Copeland look all day. Third down, 10 yards to go. The Aggies rush four. And Amir King, the running back, beats Chance Cook and catches it for the touchdown. The fifth receiving touchdown for sophomore running back Amir King. So you're getting rid of the ball so fast in there, so it's catch, one, two, drop, release the ball right away. So you really are having a hard time getting to the quarterback, which means you have to play very tight on your um, defensive coverage there. And Chance just took an outside move and had the inside open up, and there got a TD on it. But there's a flag. After the play was over, sportsmanlike conduct, number 15, incarnate word, using vulgar language to address an official. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Result of the play is a touchdown. Danny Jalen Campbell's been ejected. That is his second unsportsmanlike penalty for using vulgar language to the official. And both have come in his half, so Campbell's done unsportsmanlike conduct because of the two the unsportsmanlike. Therefore, he's been disqualified. Well, that's unfortunate that ha that happens. They, they still got the TD, though, and they still you know, are closing in on this. And so it's not a walk in the park for the Aggies. You're going to have to turn around there. You have to play a little bit because now you're coming to the end of the third quarter. you got one quarter left. Don't look now. Point after for Carson Moore. And it's 27-14. So the Cardinals have outscored the Yagis 7-3 here in the third quarter. And this Aggie offense was humming early. Took a 21-0 lead, and uh, they've had drives. They've accumulated yards, Danny, but they haven't finished off drives as often as I'm sure Doug Martin would like. Yeah, you get into the red zone or you get close down into the territory where you should start converting some of these for seven and we uh, end up walking away with a field goal 30, which is not bad, right? You miss a field goal 36 and then we make one that's uh, inside the red zone, but some of those have to, you have to get seven out in some of those drives. So it, the, the score, it, it's close, but it feels like it should be a lot bigger, but it's not. And the Aggies can't look now. They can't turn around. I mean, uh, UIW may go get them. David Albert handles the kickoffs. Carson Moore handles the field goals and extra points. The Aggie returners are way up near the 20 and the 30. That's Jason Huntley right there. He's right around the 20. The Aggies have had some opportunities on kickoffs to return them today. Five career kick return touchdowns for Jason Huntley. FBS record is seven, none this year. He had three in the final six a year ago. 
And they will kick to Jason Huntley. Huntley across the 40, looking for a hole. Huntley oh. breaks a couple of tackles, and he gets into UIW territory. You just get that feeling, Danny, every I, time he gets yeah, a shot, yeah. he's going to take it to the house. You know, when, he, when, he, when you saw that last one where he cuts across the middle there, and he's about to break to the outside to see if he can't get a lane in there, someone grabs the back of his jersey. But if he doesn't do that, I think he gets the corner, and he's off to the races for a score. But you're right. Every time he touches it, it's like, oh, this is it. He's going to get it. And you'll take it. The Aggies have it at the 47 of UIW. So really good field position for Josh Atkins, Jason Huntley, and the Aggie offense. Quick strike to Tony Nichols, and he is met immediately by Chris Thomas, the cornerback out of Houston. You know, Cardinals this will play in this bend, don't quarter. break type Time defense. Field. And so that's why you only get these little dump and deep passes. Pickup of three on the pass and catch with Nicholson. And that is the end of three quarters. The Aggies trying to hang on for their first win this year. It's a two possession game in Las Cruces. Beautiful night here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. 27-14 Aggies as we get ready for the start of the fourth. Adam Young alongside former Aggie DB Danny Nee. And while we have a moment, we want to pass along our condolences to the family of former Aggie great Billy Ray Lachlan, who passed away earlier this month, Danny. And you knew the Lachlan family very well. I did. And, you know, the more that I found out about uh, the patriarch, Billy Ray Lachlan, coming from Rockdale, as the story goes, he were down there trying to recruit, and uh, one of the recruiters said, yeah, come to, come to Las Cruces, and maybe you can get a scholarship. So he hits hike from Rockdale to Las Cruces. He starts. He gets drafted in the first round and has a great career, and also he has many other of his um, sons, three sons played here. Big play right here, Adam. Jason Huntley to the sideline, spins and slips. And I just want to finish up on the Lachlan. So, so Mr. Lachlan played here, and... So did his son, Ray Lachlan, another son, Kerry Lachlan, who coached here. We had a son of Kerry's that played here. And his youngest son, Kim Lachlan, also played here. So there's a lineage of the Lachlans here at New Mexico State who could run the ball just like that. So we're, we're sad, but we're also prayers are with the Lachlan family. Yeah, Tymon Lachlan graduated a year ago, had a really good game in the last win for the Yankees last November against Alcorn State. After the good run by Huntley, here's Jason again. Huntley breaks the tackle, trying to pull defenders into the end zone. And he has stopped just shy of the goal line at the one. I think, I think he knew it right at the end there. He was just a little frustrated that he didn't push that thing in there. But there wasn't much he could do about that. And now right here, you reward Jason Huntley. Yeah, so there's Jason Huntley coming right at you. He makes a break, break there. Lots of coverage and just held out of the end zone. Huntley spins out of a tackle. He's in the end zone. Rushing touchdown number six for Jason Huntley. And Adam, you're right. He, he did most of the work trying to get you down to this part. And it's like, give him the ball, let him push it in the end zone. I'm happy for him. He's a, he's a great young man, and so he's had a great career here. So I hope he uh, comes out of here with a big smile on this carry. And as he pushes it in the end zone, nothing there. Gives a little spin move and walks it nicely right in. 27th career overall touchdown for Huntley. Point after is good from Dylan Brown. It's hard to say Jason Huntley is having a career year and he's at his best right now because he's had some really good years, but the numbers show it. This is the best Jason Huntley has been in his four-year Aggie career. Yeah, and, and it's nice that uh, it worked well for him by being an Aggie here, coming from that Martin High School, Arlington, Texas. Great career. Four plays, 47 yards in just over one minute. And Huntley was active during that drive. He now has 18 carries for 108. His third game this year with 100-plus rushing yards. He had 133 two games ago at Georgia Southern. And the Aggies have been successful on the ground. 34 carries, 169. 
So you're looking at 287, Danny, through the year, 169 on the ground. That's a pretty good ratio yeah, right it, there. It is. And, you know, coming in off the second half, when I was talking to you, we were talking about, you know, it'd be nice to get that running game going. I think they are getting the running game going. And this will be a return for UIW. Catching the Aggies off guard down the near sideline. Sikori Tolls. Return touchdown of 100 plus. The Aggies thought he would kneel, and he returns it for a touchdown. There's a shocker right there, but you know, you have to cover, even though you put it in the end zone, he doesn't take a knee, he doesn't have to sit down on that, and he didn't. So kickoff, you have to stay in your lanes. He found people not staying in their lanes and made him pay, so takes it down to the house and keeps this thing interesting. And Sikori told usually not, the, not one of the kick returners for UIW. Usually it's Jaden Smith or Jalen Jimerson. Jimerson not available today. Point after good from Carson Moore. So I'm sure Tolds wasn't really expecting to get chances in the return game, and he takes advantage. It goes as a 100-yard kick return touchdown, but he was about four or five yards deep into the end zone. It was 100-plus without a doubt. Yeah. And I think he caught everyone just not in their lanes. And so sometimes when you get all the way to the end zone, it's hard to stay in your lane and stay evenly spread across the field. So you have some guys that are in front, some guys are in behind, and it leaves gaps that he can just weave his way through, which he did. Now, making excuses, that was a great return. And, uh, you know, the Eggs got to answer the bell. Well, could Jason Huntley answer with one of his own? We saw that, Danny, in 2017. Utah State had a kick return touchdown, and right. right after, Huntley answered with one. Back in the Arizona Bowl two years ago. It's a great game. Kickoff from David Alberts. Pooch is in. A return up to the 35-yard line. And that was Robert Downs the third, the up man. Now, when you pooch it because you're afraid of Huntley, Offside. that leads to good Number field 16. position, even if there isn't much Taking of a return. Team. It, it, it does. Penalty added in the run. First down. And a five-yard penalty is added, so the Aggies get five extra. And the ball is going to be at the 41. Two straight weeks now for Josh Atkins without an interception. Running back is Gibson. Tackled from behind by Jacob Harper. That was carry number 11 for Gibson. Nice split between Huntley and Gibson. 18 for Huntley. And 11 rushes for Gibson. Atkins looking to right, then looking left. Now he rolls to his right. Decides not to throw, and he's tackled from behind, out of bounds by Harper. Second straight tackle for him. I, I think that's a good decision right there, and I know some of the receivers were putting their hands up like, you know, you can get me, you can get me, here I am. But they were covered. There were people right on him, and without, you know, being on the run, it just, there's a problem. And so you can go get positive yards. I think that's the right thing to do. So it's third down and six. The Aggies not much better than UIW today on third down. Four of 13. Empty backfield for the redshirt sophomore Atkins. High grab for Nicholson. Lunging for the first down, not a good spot. And the Aggies will be a yard shy. He was reaching. Yeah, he was. He knew where he was, too. So he, after he wasn't brought down and came across there, he dove for as many yards as he could get, leaves it fourth and short. Let's see what Coach chooses to do here. The Aggies are three for three on fourth. They converted on a fourth and 12 earlier. 
The ruling on the field was that the runner was short of the line to gain. Previous play was under further review. All right, so they're going to review the spot. The Aggies were able to get a, a better spot on a review earlier in the game in the first half. That helped them get a first down and a fourth down spot. Here's a shot. He comes across the middle, wasn't tackled. He knew that he was short, so he dove for as many as he could get. I can't tell from there where the ball is. He rolls over it, but he was already down by that point. I like Tony's understanding of where he is in the yeah. ball game. You know, down in distance. Those are the those are the basic things that you always want to teach your players. Is like, where are you in the game? Where are you with the down, you know, the down and distance? He knew where he was. He knew he came in a little short, so he had to jump and try to get as many positive yards as possible. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner is short of the line to gain. It's fourth down. So no change from the referee, Scott Kimball, fourth and one. And the Aggies will go for it. On a fourth down earlier, they used Matt Romero on a direct snap to him, and he got the first down. They might do the same here with Josh Atkins. We'll see. The Yaggies need the 49 of UIW. They're at midfield. They go to their biggest back, Christian Gibson, breaking free. The senior out of Dallas, his first touchdown this year. Adam, I'm, I'm so happy for him. You know, he's a great, he's a great kid, senior year. He's worked so hard, and so when Huntley got his, it was like, hey, we, can we get Gibson one? I'm, I'm not trying to be greedy, but it's nice to pay some of these guys back that have worked so hard. Gibson saw the end zone and would not be denied on that for sure. Danny, right after he scored, he let out a huge scream, a huge scream, letting out a lot of emotion. The rolling on the field is a touchdown. Previous play is under further review. He knew it right there. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Danny, I think he's short. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. That's, that's good camera work, but there he is crossing the goal line right somewhere in there. Hard to tell from that shot, but ball loose. They strip another. That was Ian Peterson. Redshirt Jr. out of Round Rock with the strip. Well, if, he, if they strip well, it there, that's a touchback as it bounces through the end zone. Now the call on the field is touchdown. That's the call on the field. So there needs to be enough evidence here to change it. And in case you're just joining us, the Aggies had a fumble near the goal line to start the game. Jason Huntley was reaching for the pylon. And the ball came loose, and it bounced into the end zone for a touchback. So this could be the second touchback call on a running back fumble near the end zone in this game. After review, the runner fumbled prior to crossing the goal line. The ball rolled out of the end zone by rule. That's a touchback. It's going to be incarnate, ball, incarnate words ball, first and 10 at the 20 yard line. All right. Well, timeout on the field. You don't see that very often. We've seen it twice. Just like Doug Martin said earlier, there should be more points in this game. The Aggies lead by 13. It very easily could be a lot more. 11.52 left in the fourth. The Aggie defense will try to step up after this. The Aggies have 515 total yards. They have 223 on the ground, but they only have 34 points to show for it. Could be more. Should be a touchdown for Gibson. Should be another touchdown for Jason Huntley, but fumbles at the one-yard line leading to touchbacks have helped UIW stay in this game early on in the fourth. And there you see it right there. So getting before he crosses the goal line, so still in the field of play, knocks the ball out, it bounces through the end zone, and that's a touchback. 
A lot of credit goes to Ian Peterson, who never quit on the play and forced a fumble at the one. Now you're he easily could have quit. Yeah, you're absolutely, all absolutely right, Adam. So now the Aggie defense will try to stand tall. Carry there for Kevin Brown. Rashi Hodge Jr. is back in. He started the tackle. Miles Veen <laughs> saying, I didn't do anything. <laughs> he was trying to pull one out as well, saying, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a turnover here. I'm going to pull that ball out. That's the third Aggie turnover, three fumbles. No interceptions for the Atkins. The Aggies have forced one turnover on a Jared Phipps pick. Second down and eight yards to go. The Aggies rush four. They put a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks today. Pass is complete to Mark Sullivan, his second catch here today. Just shy of the marker by maybe a half yard. You know, that ball comes out so quick in this offense. It's a one-two drop, throw the ball, and even quicker at times, you can just catch it and throw it. Ray Buford is so far off the guy that that quick little slant in there is open, and he throws it so quick, there's not much you can do, with, and they get six or seven yards. Copeland's the quarterback. Filio gets the first down before he's belted by Austin Perkins at the third level on the Aggie defense. Limited action today for Keondrick Filio, but he's used in situations like that where you need just one yard. Where he can pound it in there, yep. And Filio is still in. Brown, Filio, and King, the three running backs used today for head coach Eric Morris. They swing oh. it out, and Rashi Hodge Jr. was oh. all over it, leveling Camden Perry. Oh. He, he is becoming a big hit master. He saw this thing as soon as the quarterback squared up, and that was his guy, and his guy pulled up to catch the ball, and it's radar lock. I'm coming in hot, and he just drills them. Loss of five yards. Hodge had eight tackles for loss for the year coming in, which led the team. Hodge showing pressure. So is Wilcott's low throw. Copeland had to get rid of it in a hurry. Ferguson in coverage intended for Perry. And Hodge and Wilcox were all over the quarterback, Copeland. Yeah, you ended up coming with more guys than they could cover. I mean, that they could block. And so he had to get rid of the ball quickly before the receiver was ready for it and created that situation right there. UIW much better on third down the previous quarter or so. Now they're 3 of 12 for the game. They were 0 for their first 10. Copeland, too deep, looking for Buford. I should say they were 0 for their first nine. They had converted on three straight third downs before the incomplete pass right there. Fourth and 13. That's a good job for the Aggies right there to get off the field. It's also good to have uh, Hodge back in there and make sure he's okay and still playing. Yeah, we've seen Rashi Hodge return. He left with an injury earlier. I haven't seen Devin Richardson come back in, though. Yeah, nor have I. Cardinals needed points. Now they have to punt. Fair catch called for by O.J. Clark at the 16-yard line. Time out on the field. 9-18 left in the fourth. Aggies 34, Cardinals 21. Aggies trying to hang on for their first win of the season. Cardinals fell behind 21-0. They've outscored the Aggies here in this half 14-10. The Aggie lead at halftime was 24-7. Aggie ball with 9.18 left. Adam Young, Danny Nee with you. First of two straight home games for the Aggies. Jason Huntley on the ground. Cuts back up field. Spins across the 35-yard line. Big day for Huntley, who's approaching his season high in rushing yards. 
Yeah, it's a great run right there. It's great vision by Huntley. You get a jailbreak and people are just everywhere and he just finds the right areas to go. What a great runner. It's only a two score game here, so yep. they gotta put some more on the board. And the Aggies will use some clock. I'm sure we'll see them just run the football a lot here in the final eight minutes plus. Running game's been good today. A couple of fumbles, but good yardage. Gibson and Huntley both over 100. Huntley patient, waiting for his blockers before he's shoved out of bounds by cornerback Malik Phillips. Gain of seven for Jason Huntley. And it's going to be second down and three. Under eight left. Check that second down and five for the Aggies. Right back to Huntley. Trying to spin out of a tackle again, but this time Andy Jennings, the transfer from Fresno City Community College, drags him down. I thought he was going to break loose of that thing and be off to the races again, but Jennings had a good hold of him and wouldn't just let go there. Trying to run around, bounce that thing to the outside where there's lots of green, but just couldn't get away from Jennings. Third down for the Aggies, a long one. They need the 46. Huntley. He is so hard to take down, Danny. And that has been shown all day today. Yeah, he's tough. And he's going to, you know, make you think about whether you're going to break down and try to bring him down or whether you're going to, you know, what you got to do to drive him to the ground. But uh, he's doing a great job today, no doubt about it. First down, and now a player is down for UIW. I didn't see what happened to him. Yeah, you? I didn't either. He okay. just kind of fell. Yeah. Andy Jennings is the one who is down. 6.48 left. That does stop the clock. So you have a lot of, lot of parts of your game that's working and some that you still need to work on. You know, certainly um, special teams have been doing such a good job recently, and it's, and, uh, it's too bad that they were able to, to run one back 100 plus yards on that, uh, but you got to you got to keep improving each week, and you can never you know try to go backwards. Yeah, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You probably should have at least 14 more points yeah. Yeah. on the two fumbles at the goal line, and a mental lapse for sure on the kick return touchdown for Tolts. Jennings will come off the field. Jennings had a TD last week, huh? At, uh, when they were playing Stephen F. Austin. Looks like he is walking off okay, but he does come off the field. Six forty-eight left. Right now, Josh Atkins just managing the clock. Trying to push the Aggies to their first win since November 3rd a year ago. Clock will start. Play clock down to 15 as Atkins snaps it. Now he's going to throw. Takes a deep shot. Down the sideline, that is way too far for Tony Nicholson. It's a good time to do it. The Aggies yeah. been running the football. Maybe you catch UIW off guard. Yeah, coming in off the off the break there, you catch him flat-footed and maybe you know, out and up, and you catch him sleeping. And I'm all about trying to take a shot now and again, but you know, certainly there's there's other people, there other guys in the route too. So look around, see what's happening. Here's Christian Gibson. Almost had a running touchdown earlier. He gets all the yards on it except one on his run earlier that 
led to a fumble at the goal line. Just a tough runner right there. You see that, you know, gets a little stiff arm in there. He didn't, it's not going to just fall just because they're in there. He's going to keep pushing for all the yards. The Aggies will bring in some fresh bodies. Jason Huntley comes in. So does Isaiah Lottie. The Aggies need the 32, third and four. A pitch for Huntley. Blockers on the outside. He goes inside the block, stays on his feet, spins into a teammate, Jared Wyatt. But most importantly, he got the first down and the chains will move. Clock will stop for the chains to move. First down to 10. That's, that's a nice run by Huntley there. It's a quick little toss out there, and everyone's man on man, and all you got to do is just shield your guide long enough for, for Huntley to get by. You see two blocks on the right and left, gives him a lane, and again, it's just one little grab something, but he didn't go down, and he just keep churning out the yards. Three timeouts left for the Aggies and the Cardinals. Under five left in the fourth. Two-score game. Aggies driving. Huntley, nothing there. And Kalechi and Labechi dragging Jason by his left arm. <laughs> Timeout, Incarnate Word. Yeah, I'm not First sure about that. Timeout, UIW. 30 seconds in length. Two receiving touchdowns for Tony Nicholson. Josh Atkins is thrown for two. One yard running touchdown for Huntley, 77 yard punt return touchdown for OJ Clark. I think, well, he, I think he was down pretty good, wasn't he? Just wanted to make sure. A little turf ride there for Jason. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The Aggies will host UTEP next week. UTEP was struggling on the road earlier today against UAB. They only have one win. That was against FCS Houston Baptist in their opener. You know, anytime UTEP comes to town, it's it's a uh, it's a game, it's a brawl. It, it, next week should be no different. The Aggies will finish their year at Liberty two weeks from now. My weeks are done. Atkins will pull it, steps up, throws to a wide open. Andre Bodison flagged down. No signal of a touchdown just yet. It would be Andre's first career touchdown. Did catch him wide open after the scramble there, and so someone Personal lost. Foul. Illegal blindside block, number seven. Offense, 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. Illegal blindside block on Terrell Warner. Danny, that can't happen. That can't happen, because that's, that's a touchdown right there. That takes points off the board there. There's the pass, he's wide open. There he is right there, you can see him right from the side. Yeah, he, he's, in, he's in without the block. He, I was just gonna say, yeah, wasn't gonna even make the tackle. Yeah, that's one where I would hate if I were uh, Terrell to go into a into, uh, film session. Huntley finds a hole, powers ahead, reaches for the goal line. Oh man, are they gonna, I can't believe that they're gonna mark him short. Rolling on the field, runner short of the goal line. Made the first down, it's first and goal. It will be first and goal. But he is short of the goal line. What an effort by Jason Huntley. Let's, let's take a look at this because there's so many things that are going on. He first has to break the guys from the outside, get the corner, and then cuts back. There's like six, seven, eight guys there. Sure enough, his knee is down short of it. But there's six guys there, and he's still picking up positive yards. Christian Gibson, the running back. The Yagis go to Gibson, and he walks in for the touchdown. The first touchdown this year for Christian Gibson. The redshirt senior out of Dallas. Now he can celebrate. That's a great job right there. Good blocking up front there. He gets a the corner and just walks that one in. 
Nicely done offensive line. Christian Gibson, congratulations, good run. Danny, there are certain guys you watch and you see them work hard every single day, do all the right things, say all the right things. Christian Gibson's one of those guys. Every day in the classroom, every day on the football field, and he gets rewarded here today, his first touchdown this year after six a year ago. Aggies by 20, under four left in the fourth. Best running day this year for the Yaggies. They had 209 on the ground at Georgia Southern two games ago. Look at that picture perfect sky. The Yaggies today with 297 on the ground. That is a perfect view. 41 21. 174 for Huntley, 115 for Gibson. Season high for both. And Josh Atkins has managed this game perfectly. 316 through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions, high completion rate again, 28 of 38. Need one more stop, and the Aggies can take this one home. Dylan Brown will kick off. Sikori Tolds had a 100-yard Kick return touchdown earlier in a ball the Aggies didn't think he would take out. Caught him off guard, and this one is a touchback. There's another player that's got lots of uh, action striking the Wonder Dog. Yeah. Busy day as always, Busy right? Busy day. They're striking the Wonder Dog. Not a great day for UIW offensively, but much better here in half two. 205 total yards today. Struggled offensively in the first half, and they struggled on drops. That one was bobbled and then caught by Mark Sullivan. Nothing's really been clean out wide today for UIW. That's a great catch. He bobbled it in there, but uh, Copeland had lots of time in the pocket, and that's why he's able to get that ball out there and Copeland, the Southland Conference freshman of the year a year ago. Back to throw, and he is sacked. He's been sacked a few times today. Dropped that time by Donovan King. Second sack this year for King, sophomore from Colleen, Texas. That's just great yeah. winning the line of scrimmage on the defensive line there. You just get a bull rush from everyone. It's straight up man on man, and it's just go get them, Bubba. It's the biggest Bubba wins, and we're able to pull a sack down. John Graves was also there, so probably a half sack for both. Copeland launches, oh. broken up. Javon Ferguson poked it away. Another great day for the senior out of Baton Rouge. And that left hand came in there at the perfect time. There it is, balls out there, and there's Javon, puts that left hand in there and knocks that thing away. That's great defense right there. Great tackling, great coverage. Team high, seven tackles for Ferguson, and now a pass breakup, and it's fourth and eight. UIW has to go for it. Two and change left. Flat came in, and it's going to be on the Cardinals up front. Snap infraction, number 72. Offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Snap infraction on the center, Oop. Brandon Flores. And he knew it. Fourth and 13. Incomplete. Two flags come wow. down. Austin Perkins went colliding with a wide receiver. Austin Perkins came from center field. 
and just came screaming the whole time. Now, if the ball was touched, it makes the receiver live, but let's see. It was touched, yep. I'm not sure how they're going to still call it, though. Personal foul with targeting, oh. number 19. Defense hitting a defenseless pl player. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. The previous play is under further review. Mm. McGraw had pretty good coverage, but I think with Perkins coming over, that forced the incompletion. It was a pretty good throw there by Copeland. Yeah, and and Perkins came. He was the center deep. He was the one high safety deep, and his job was to, well, he threw that from a long ways away. His job was to ensure that no one completes a deep pass. So as soon as they turned and tried to throw that ball deep down the left sidelines, Perkins took off running. He sprinted all the way over there. Gave a little blow maybe to the head there, so that's what they're looking at there. But great coverage, great um, from side to side. Rodney McGraw, who was also there in coverage, has played a lot today. We haven't seen Jason Simmons Jr., by the way. There was no word before the game if he was out or... Yeah, we have. Case was with him, and he's been playing. He's been playing rock mm -hmm. solid as well. I've seen him on the sidelines, and so I know he's out there, and I know he's dressed to play. So they're checking on the targeting call on the review. Two thirty left in the fourth. There's a referee today, Scott Campbell, busy man. Nine penalties on the Cardinals, 10 on the Aggies. Scott Campbell looks like he's been working out a little mm -hmm. bit as well. Yeah. That was a fourth and 18 play, by the way, so they would have pretty much finished off the ball game but it extends the drive for UIW. This ball was placed perfectly by Copeland. That was a great thrown ball right there. There's always that fine line, Danny, between playing hard and just playing a little too hard right there by Perkins. And You know, I, I don't, I think Perkins' head was he wasn't looking at the guy like he was coming in to target him. I think he put his head down, but it's still, it's still a, an act of hitting someone to the head. Rodney did have good coverage, though. He had really yeah. good coverage. And in fact, I think his hand went in there. Let's see what he has to say. After review, the ruling on the field for targeting is confirmed. Number 19 has been disqualified. Mm -hmm. This is a live ball foul. Therefore, it's 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Danny, you know where this really hurts? Austin Perkins can't play yeah. in the first half next week. Yeah, right, that's exactly right. That's unfortunate too, really. But, you know, they, they made a call. They looked at the film and looked at the replay. And This one is pretty much over. It's a 20-point game. But now Austin Perkins, because of the ejection, will miss the first half next week against Utah. So that's a big blow for next week. Amir King hauls it in. Running back used out wide for UIW. You know, Perkins has really been coming on strong too, right? Last week he had 10 tackles. I think you noted that before. And so, yeah, that is going to hurt a little bit next week. But got to finish this one now. John Graves breaking free. Copeland gets away. Completes the pass downfield to Camden Perry. And now the Cardinals are moving the football here in the final two minutes. You know, he's scrambling in there. Lots of pressure, but moves around out of the pocket there. Avoids a sack. Delivers a nice strike down the middle. Right over the hands of Hodge. Towards the end zone, incomplete. A little too far there for Sullivan. Phipps was with him step by step. And McGraw had the help. 
on the near side of the field. That was the same play as the one that uh, Perkins got called for the, or was ejected on. And so the same play to the other side here where they're taking a shot down the sidelines. Second down and 10. The Aggies have outgained the Cardinals by almost 400 yards, 613 to 231. To the sideline for Brady Rogers, Matt Young, who has one and a half sacks and one and a half tackles for loss today, pushes him out of bounds. The young man from Las Cruces, Onyate High School grad, his brother Monroe plays for Cal Berkeley. His father Fred in the ring of honor, former NFL star. First down to Marquez Perez. Aggies show blitz. Wilcox couldn't get to Copeland. Tosses it over Young. Perfect touch to Gunnar Henderson. Matt Young was in a good spot. <laughs> you know, that's two passes that has just gone right over the top. The last one was Hodge where they completed back in there. This time it's over Matt Young. First of all, he, he avoids a sack again. There's, oh, there's mm. Matt Young. He just not quite get there enough, but that's a good thrown ball. First and goal from the four. Cardinals trying to finish off the game with a bang. Keondrick Filio turns his legs forward. Had a rushing touchdown earlier. Oh no, some extracurriculars after the play. Player went down for UIW. This might be Archivon Ferguson. Sure have been a lot of penalties. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 44, defense. Mm. Half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. I thought that was Ferguson, but it was Matt Young, and now Young will go off, and Shane Jackson, redshirt senior out of Houston, replaces him Incarnate at the money Word position. Has elected to put the next play on the snap, clockwise. Cardinals from the one. Wing back is Philip Higgins. They throw it to Higgins, out of his reach. Higgins usually just used as a blocking fullback. Let's see if someone put a hand on her. No, he just missed it. He just didn't get all the way around there to, to uh, he wasn't expecting it. It just happened too fast. He was open though, wasn't he? That would have walk, been a walk in the park. Running back, Keondrick Filio, number 29 in white. Copeland will keep it. He'll follow Filio, and he's into the end zone with a rushing touchdown. Third rushing touchdown this year for the sophomore, John Copeland. You know, the Aggies are, are stacking, that, uh, stacking the inside, looking for the quick play up the middle. And instead, he takes that to the outside. Copeland runs pretty good. You know, I've noted before that you know, he can cover some ground there, and he quickly uh, stepped out there. An extra point for Carson Moore. 41-28. Only 57 seconds left, so UIW is going to run short on time here. Well, Danny, you would like to finish a little better, and the Aggies almost did, but it turns out to be not a great finish with Perkins getting ejected and now UIW able to score a late touchdown. It doesn't feel like maybe it did a couple minutes ago. Yeah, I, You're right, and it's kind of sad because it's a win, right? And so you should we should be celebrating that, but there was too many things that went on right at the end here that makes it hard, but you still have to collect the win when you can get a win, and we need a win, right? And you find things to clean up that you need to really get cleaned up before next week, because that's going to be a rough and tumble game as well. 
This is the time of the year when everybody has injuries, but Richardson went down in the first half of the Yankees. You're not going to have Perkins now for the first half next week. We don't know about Jason Simmons Jr. Fortunately, Rashi Hodge Jr., who went down earlier, did come back in, and he's made some plays. But this time of the year, everybody has injuries. Aggies will use timeout. a timeout as the Cardinals State. lined up for an all kick. 30 seconds in length. 57 seconds left. The Aggies will improve to 1-9. Cardinals will fall to 5-6. They're going to lose their fourth in a row after a 5-2 start. First time all year we've seen the offense and the defense, Danny, play well together. We talked about this at halftime. Yeah. 28 points for UIW, but only 269 total yards of offense. So the Aggies have held them in check for the most part here today. Only 26 rushing yards for UIW. The most recent win for the Aggies came last November, November 3rd, 2018. It was also their last game against an FCS opponent. Jason Hundley had four touchdowns that day. He started the day with a kick return touchdown. There you see Royce Caldwell right behind him. Today, O.J. Clark had a 77-yard punt return touchdown. to The Aggies defeated Alcorn State 52-42. Pretty good kick. And Incarnate Word recovers, then a whistle. It's going to be Cardinal football. The result of the play, the kick was recovered by Incarnate Word, first down. Malik Phillips was trying to run it back. Gibson kind of waited back, and UIW was hounding the football. And they're going to get it back with 56 seconds left. You know, the hands team, that, which is the receiving team, is one of the hardest teams to be on because what people are coming down, they're head hunting. They're looking to pop you, and you have to make sure you get up for the ball. And if you if you go make a play on it, you gotta you got to go get it. You can't wait for the ball to come to you, or this will happen just what you saw there on, the, on that last play. Two possession game, 56 seconds left. Copeland going backwards, almost throws an interception. Rashi Hodge Jr., the ball magnet, got his hands on it. There is a flag down, though, in the secondary. Man, there's been a lot of penalties. Holding on an eligible receiver, number 29. Defense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Jared Phipps whistled for the penalty. 50 seconds left. Empty backfield for John Copeland. Copeland looking straight ahead. Double clutches, had a man, and he overthrows his receiver, Colby Anthony. You know, this is a tough part of the game because you end up rushing just two or three, maybe four, but, but you drop everyone else. But here's the problem. If you give the quarterback too much time, if you're in the secondary, you can't cover the whole time if he's sitting back there for five seconds. So somehow you still have to keep pressure on the quarterback. And I'm not sure we can get there with three guys. Yeah, the Yankees only rushed three right there. This is a run, though, for Amir King. A pick up for King, and that will move the chains again for UIW. They've outscored the Yankees in this half, 21-17. to 17. Fade route towards the end zone, and it is... Intercepted. Wow. Still waiting for the official signal. And it will be an interception. The result of the play is an interception, New Mexico State resulting in the touchback. 
first down. Wow, look at this interception. Great coverage, going for the deep ball. Lays Jared out. Phipps is second today, Danny. Wow. Outstanding. Nice layout for the ball, nice extension. He's in good position to begin with. Extends out, has the ball. Wow, amazing. Kept the foot in. And yeah, now the Yagis can just take a knee with 26 seconds left. Jared Phipps with two interceptions here today. Before the game, the Yagis had only two as a team, and both interceptions had come from Austin Perkins. They have two today, both from Phipps. It's been kind of a strange game, Adam. I mean, had turnovers where you fumble through the end zone twice. Mm -hmm. Kickoff return, punt returns, lots of penalties, players thrown out, but you still get the win. Jalen Campbell was ejected for UIW, and Austin Perkins ejected for the Aggies because of targeting. And he will miss the first half next week. 41-28, the final score. Overall, Danny, a really good day for the Aggie offense. I know the turnovers were a little high again, but a good day nonetheless. Yeah, I think they had a good balance attack too, right? So you had a, you had a lot of um, a lot of uh, got a lot of extracurricular activity right here is what we got going on now. But you had a balance attack with rushing and passing. Yeah, tempers flared up late in the game, and a little carryover here post game. Forty-one, twenty-eight. The Yankees defeat UIW. Post game comes up next. We liked what we saw early. The Yankees jumped out to a twenty-one, nothing lead. Adam Young, Danny Knee with you. It wasn't a strong finish, but a win's a win at this point, Danny. Yeah, a win's a win, and you got to take it. And whatever you got to clean up for next week, you do that. But it is a W. They've been working hard for it. They got it. A lot of positive things come at it. You got to focus on the positive, cleans up the negative, and be ready for next week. First win since early November last year for the Aggies. Time now for the game highlights. A really good night for the Aggie offense. 611 total yards to just 282 for UIW, and Tony Nicholson had a great first half. He did, he had lots of catches. He was very busy. Josh did a great job. 98 yards receiving for Tony Nicholson. Two interceptions today for Jared Phipps. We doubled our interception production. This was a 42-yard touchdown catch for Nicholson, and the Aggies led 14-0 after one quarter. This was a game changer right here as O.J. Clark returns a punt 77 yards for a score. Now that's a nice return. He comes up the middle, he breaks it to the outside and takes it all the way to the house. That's a great job by O.J. Clark. First punt or kick return touchdown by the Aggies this year. It's shocking that it was O.J. Clark to get one before Jason Huntley. Here's a one-yard touchdown run by Keondrick Filio to make it 21 to seven. The Aggies converted on fourth down right here on a wacky play. That turns out to be a catch for Nicholson and then a made field goal of 30 yards for Dylan Brown. And the Yankees led 24 to seven at halftime. We saw the defense very active, Danny, all day pressuring the quarterback, John Copeland. Yeah, and you'd like to see that. I'd like to see that everyone got into the action as well. It wasn't just one guy with a sack. It was Matt Young, Cedric Wilcott, Xander Yarborough. Roy Lopez was good in his return. We saw two quarterbacks today for UIW. Copeland much better in half two, wasn't very good in half one. Yep, but uh, still the Aggies came storming back, and there's Huntley again. He had a fantastic game. They, Gibson and Huntley both had great games. 174 yards rushing, and this rushing touchdown for Jason Huntley. 115 for Christian Gibson. This one hurt a little bit, a kick return touchdown yeah, this for Toll. This thing's a little bit because you, you kick it all the way to the end zone thinking he's going to take a knee. He doesn't, and he takes it to the house. Huntley continued in the fourth quarter. Look at him right here. He was making people miss all day. Yeah, spinning and just whatever it took. There's a little shuttle pass to him, and he takes that one way up into the, into the secondary. This would set up a touchdown run of two 
yards for Christian Gibson as Huntley was reaching for the goal line. And then Copeland with a touchdown run of one yard to bring the Cardinals within 13. They converted on the onside kick. The ball was downed at the spot and then an interception. Pretty impressive in the end zone for Jared Phipps, his second pick of the day. 41-28, the final score. Phipps stepped up big time for the Yankees. The defense overall, a good game here today. Time now for our Whataburger play of the game. You could have chosen that second interception by Jared Phipps, but we have to go with the impressive 77-yard punt return touchdown for O.J. Clark here today. That will be our Whataburger play of the game as the Aggies win 41-28. Good day for the offense. You get over 600 yards, that's impressive. Yeah, so not, notwithstanding the, the score itself, but if you look at the total yards, you're right, 600 yards, that is a lot of production. Great passing, great rushing, 316, 295, great. Too many penalties, but things to clean up. Turnovers, gosh, turnovers. We just can't get rid of that thing, but it's a win. No interceptions again for Josh Atkins for the second straight week. Yeah, the Aggies had some turnovers, but they came in some wacky plays at the goal line, which could have led to more points.